Hola YouTube, my name is Ricardo Lino and I'm a wheel addict. Welcome to Skate Talks number 26. And I'm in cold South Africa, it's winter. I'm just drinking like hot drinks. But today, guess what? My guest is again <laughs> one of my favorite skaters. I've been really, really lucky. I've been talking with people that mean a lot to me and I re I'm really a fan of the way that all these guys skate. Today my guest, he comes from the UK and he has a super, super unique way of skating. I, I, I don't know what else I can say about him. It's just... Well, there was a brand called Dirt Box. Do you might remember from the UK? He was somehow related to Dirt Box, but I also don't really know how he's related with the brand. I do know that he's 30 years old. He's about to third. He's about to turn 31 really soon, and he's been skating for over 16 years now. So my guest today is Scott Blackmore, and I'm about to call him right now. So let's make the phone call. I'm curious about this guy. I really am. I don't know where to get all that creativity, so let's see what's up with Mr. Scott. Yo, how are you doing, Scott? You know, not bad, not bad. <laughs> how are you doing? I'm good, man. Like, I, I always love to do these introductions because I always go freestyle. I never know what to say, and... I know that most of the people that do these things actually study their guests and I don't know. I think yeah. I, I think I'm just way too much watching stuff from everyone. So when it comes to the day like today, I guess I know a little bit or I guess I know enough and I like to go freestyle. So <laughs> yeah. before well, I'm, like, I'm, I'm excited for the surprise intro. I have no idea what's going to do. <laughs> it's really bad. <laughs> it's really bad. I would be scared. And I just want, before we even start, to you and to everyone listening to this, I always say this in the beginning, and please do not get me wrong if I interrupt you. I get really excited, and it's just, it's, I can't control myself, and sometimes I just, I'm just like biting nails, and just, I just can't. Sometimes I just need to interrupt just to ask something, and I'm sorry if during the this podcast or whatever we call to this, if during this talk, if I interrupt you in the middle of some thought or something, no, I'm really sorry. Fine. You talk as much as you want. You can't stop passion. I'm not going to, you know, it's, it's a good thing. Ah, uh, well, we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so I don't really know a lot about you. I do know that I love the way that you skate and it's, 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 I don't know, man. I, I don't know how to Thank explain that. Let me, let me first just explain how did I got, how did I became such a fan of your skating? So yeah. I do know that you've been skating for quite a while, like more than like almost 16 years, but I didn't yeah. notice about your skating until a few years ago. Probably you've been skating for longer, like you've been in competitions or maybe you've been in the same place before. And I don't remember. I do remember that since I moved to Cape Town, one of my best friends mm -hmm. over here, his name is Greg Fraser. He's into filming a lot and he did a lot of this. Yeah. He did a lot of stuff kind of similar to the type of videos that you did, but he's, he skates, but he's a lot into bodyboarding and somehow his style of bodyboarding videos would relate mm -hmm. a little bit to your stuff. And of course, he was a huge fan of your skating and the way that he skates also reminds me a little bit of you. So the whole thing leads me to you somehow. Interesting. And bodyboarding. It, yeah. I would never have guessed that. <laughs> yeah, like even in bodyboarding, you would seem like usually it's the same. The guys, those guys that drop the waves, they spin or they roll and that's it. But yeah. this guy, Greg, is just is just different. And the way he skates is also different. It, it reminds me a lot of the way that you skate. Uh, it's, I'd like to see that. That'd be interesting. I'll show you. I can show you one of his videos. I think he has a video called. I don't know if it's low for life. It's 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 interesting because I used to be a fan. Man, I used to surf a lot because I come from like a a tiny beach town in Portugal, and okay. I used to be a fan of his videos before I move before I even moved to South Africa like three years ago. And I never knew that this guy surfs, and then we became good friends. But I guess yeah. we're going a little bit out of topic. So, <laughs> <laughs> how did you start skating? 
how did I start skating? Yeah. Um, I mean, I think over half my life for sure. Um, but I've always, I kind of had skates when I was younger, but then I remember the specific time that I started skating. I already kind of, my friend was on a pair of skates. I was BMXing at the time, I think, or something. And my friend had a pair of skates. And I was like, oh, let's have a go. Give me a go. And I, I've always, I was always kind of okay on them. Like, I could just like go along and it was never really an issue to like skate along. I was never like, I, I don't ever remember like not being able to go along. And I remember there was like a little set of like three stairs or something and I just jumped down them. And I think I like, I think I tried to spin down them or something. And literally from then, like that was it. Like I just, <laughs> I haven't, I haven't stopped since then really at all. And for you, that was like, Back then, were you already into like those type of aggressive skates, or you just had like cruising skates, just outside, just like every other kid on the BMX and whatever? Or um, I think I don't think I ever, not until recently, ever like skated skates not aggressively. I mean, I use that term aggressive. I don't know what it's called, but um, you know, I've only ever done like stunt skating or like freestyle skating. Yeah, whatever it's trick called. skating. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I never, I never really learned like. Rec- skating first and then took it to a lot of my friends at the time when I first started skating had done like roller hockey first and then went into skating and you could see actually in their skating that they were so much better at skating like than I was but then I guess he is and it made me more comfortable but you know I, I never I never did that first I just went straight into like stunt skating and <laughs> I love way. the. I, I never thought of stunt skating like there's all these stunt skating <laughs> I love it because you know what I I mean, I made a few videos about it and people keep complaining. And obviously, a lot of people have different opinions. And I try to a lot yeah. of times put minds out there. And a lot of times, like, people hate me for that. But you know what? In the yeah. end, I try. And I try to get everyone yeah. to call something the same. And the reason why I try to do that, I'm not saying that one name is right. I'm not saying that inline skating is right. I'm not saying that rollerblading is right. But I keep saying the same, which is the more people call the same to what we do, the stronger mm -hmm. we become. And the stronger we are, the easiest it is for things, whatever it is, to be successful. And one of the things that we, I can I give you an example would be like dirt box. As an example, I know that you guys last year, uh, I don't know, you, I'm saying you guys without knowing what you actually do with Dirtbox. <laughs> but, you know, I always related you with Dirtbox. But what I'm trying to say is that yeah. the stronger we become, the, like, the the less this type of things can happen. Companies yeah. just not happening or just dying, if you can. I didn't want to use the word dying, but if that if that's the right word. So maybe stunt no. skating is a good name. <laughs> yeah, well universal term would be good because then i wouldn't have to make up terms like stunt skate or like uh, i don't know i don't know i've heard so many bad ones but i mean you know we all know what we mean but we all have different words it's kind of it's difficult yeah it, that's where it must be the only one of the only sports that is like that as well like, i can't think of another sport where like skateboarders aren't like do we call it because it's and, just got a term and You are living, I keep saying the same, and you live in an English-speaking country, in an English-native country. Yeah. Now, imagine if you live in Portugal. In Portugal, it's called, it's called patins. In Poland, mm -hmm. it's it's rolki, I think. In Spain, it's patines. And in France, it's roller or something like that. So there's a different word in every other language. Look at BMX. Yeah. BMX, it's BMX no matter where. It's BMX. You yeah, might not true. say it, or you it might not sound the same way, but when you read it, when you spell it, yeah. when you write it somewhere on the internet, because Google is our world nowadays, you know it. So everyone mm -hmm. Googles everything. So we're just losing power there. Yeah. Right? Maybe stunt skating is the way to go. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It doesn't sound great. Though, does it? <laughs> no, no. I'm just, I'm just joking around. Tell me, <laughs> who's Dirtbox? What was Dirtbox? Um, okay, so it's, it does seem like I, I had a little like look at the questions that were on the Facebook post just to see what kind of questions I'll be getting. Okay, so let and me interrupt you. Let me let me just interrupt you there. Sorry for a second. So I guess most of the people know, but for those of them that don't know, usually before doing these skate talks on my Facebook, on my personal Facebook, I usually post who's my next guest, and a lot of people, mainly my Facebook friends. Um, 
or someone that knows the um, the guest because usually the guest is also tagging the post they post que- they just put questions in that in that post and that's what Scott is talking about right now because he saw some of the questions yeah, just, that some people did okay so just go for it sorry yeah I just thought I'd prep myself a little bit and you know see what kind of <laughs> questions were going to come up and it just, yeah, it that's a real like artist a, man a lot, were about <laughs> me being like uh, more involved with Dirtbox than I am I, know, I mean I am involved uh, what, well I was involved with Dirtbox quite a lot but I literally had nothing to do with running it like it was run it, well it was founded by Sam and Anthony I don't know I know those names, but Sam Curry and Anthony. Uh, I didn't know about Anthony. I know about Sam, and I'll yeah, tell so you why. Anthony, I'll tell you why in a few minutes. Okay. Well, Anthony is a really successful. Um, he's like a collage artist. He's like he's quite successful in the illustration world, and um, yeah. So he started. He was like the art worker behind it. He did all that, and Sam was like the business mind. And also, Sam's very creative. So he did a lot of the designing and stuff as well. And he's very, uh, you know, he's a very accomplished designer too. Um, so they, it was their company for years and I had nothing to do with it, like probably for 10 years like before even knowing me, like that was just going. And then um, just one time out of the blue, like on our DRC Vimeo, so a lot of people get that confused as well. So DRC and Dirtbox are completely different entities. They can, they're nothing to do with each other, but it just so happens that there's like overlap with the people that skate on both. Um, so DRC was already a thing and that's just, uh, DRC is that kind of crew i guess the collective okay. of my friends around where i live um and we all just like we made a video together we call ourselves drc and we did a lot what you does know, that stand know, for what does drc stand for <laughs> the drc stands for it started off as a joke but we just kind of went with it, it started off as a dorset rollerblading club like just because <laughs> we were like we tried to like go with like you know how rollerblading is seen as i'm calling like keep it as a club but and i guess a lot of people saw it as a crew but we just kept it as a club because we thought it was quite funny, just as that was. And basically, my friend made it to keep, like, so we can all post photos in a group on Facebook. So he just called it the DRC, and then it just stuck, and we went with it. Um, so the DRC is just like kind of my my friends, like that's our, you know, it's our it's our group. And um, Dirtbox contacted the DRC Vimeo, which was under my email address, so I got the message, and it was Sam just kind of like reaching out to us, being like, "Do you want to do something together? Because we really like your stuff." And then from that point on, uh, we, you know, we became really good friends, like me and Sam, like all of us basically, but me and Sam spoke a lot. And then me, Harry and Sam spoke a lot. And then he put us on. And then from then on, I guess it kind of seemed like we were more involved than we were just because, well, me and Harry made a lot together. So I suppose it looked like we were um, kind of a, a, a really large part of Dirtbox, but it just happened that me, Harry, and Sam on really well, so we spoke a lot, and that also meant that Sam would like talk about ideas that he had and kind of run us, run them through us, and we would kind of talk about it. So I guess we did have a, a quite a lot of input, but it was always Sam's thing. Anthony moved away to LA, so he wasn't really involved anymore. But it's always just as a hundred percent Sam the stuff. Box. Nothing oh. like business wise, nothing to do with me. I couldn't couldn't even tell you how much they made or anything. I have no idea. No man, I would not ask you that. Because like, I w- I would if you would be a Solomon Skidder, I would ask you how much you was getting. And I made a question to yep. <laughs> to Nikki Adams, but like, I wouldn't expect. Um... No, I'll be intrigued too. For sure. <laughs> what I do know is that what I was really surprised about after getting to know Sam a bit more, and like, he moved down to my hometown. He lives like five hours away, but he moved down to where I live and Harry lived at the time and he kind of he lived here for a summer and then moved back home and he was running dirt box out of where he was living so I kind of had a bit more of an insight to it and I was really surprised at how much like social media likes and comments and things don't it doesn't represent sales at all so he'd like drop uh, a new project say like a hat for example and like on Instagram or whatever it'd have like hundreds of likes it'd have people like oh how can I get this hat have you got any left like whatever it's like I'd be like, man, have they sold out? And he's like, no, I've sold one, and that's it. And you'd be like, that's so, like people just like they want it and they love it, but they don't actually buy it. It's really surprising. Yes, and 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 that happens mainly with clothing, and yeah, you know, that's one of. I also made, man, I think I make, made videos about everything, <laughs> but <laughs> I think that's that's why I made a video that I did last week about clothing, and I, I spoke with Sam after that via email. Yeah. And he told me that he has a project coming, but I'm not going there yet. 
But what, okay. I, what I want to say right now is that the reason why I made that video, it's because of these that you're saying. It's a lot of times. Yeah. There's not a lot of brands out there, uh, skating, clothing brands. And one of the main no. reasons what you just said, because a lot of times what happens is that people like the clothes, but then they end up going out and they go to, and I, I'm not saying it's right or wrong. They end up, go, they like something like, imagine the Kelsos make something from Basement or mm -hmm. like imagine that box makes like a super cool polo. And then people go out, they look for something that looks the same on Agent H&M that usually they yeah. have or even Primark. And on Primark, they can buy five, one each color. And they'll they'll yeah. get back home and they'll be really really happy because they bought five one each color <laughs> instead of one. But if you go back a few years, if you've been skating for sixteen years, you remember how <laughs> much it used to worth. But like not money wise, how happy it used to be when you use that Senna shirt or that Mind Game shirt. Oh my god, yeah! Just... I remember one one time getting a Senna hoodie for like seventy quid at the time, and I was like, it was like my whole Christmas present. But I was so happy with it. Yeah, but that's what that's what I'm trying to say. I remember watching. I remember, man. I'm I'm from Portugal. It's a small village in Portugal. When we first had um, satellite TV, I remember watching some. M I don't even know if it was MTV or some music thing, music show on mm -hmm. a German channel. And I remember watching a guy with a Santa shirt, and from that Santa shirt, I I knew like that guy was a skater. You know. And yeah. those things used to mean so much for us back then. Nowadays, it's more about the quantity. You don't care if, if you're, yeah, that's so if, you're true. if you're helping something, if you're representing something or whatever. And I, I'm not saying I don't do the same. Huh? I, I, I'm, I'm no, I'm not better than anyone. I try to support as much as I can. I'm just, yeah. Anyway, just stating a fact. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Um, I. And you hear it a lot that people are like, well, there's not enough good stuff out there for me to support. But then if you don't put the money into it, how are they going to make better things? It's, it's, it's a horrible cycle, isn't it, that we're kind of stuck in, I suppose. Like, I don't know. Seeing it, I mean, a lot of people also said to me, it's like, oh, how did Dirtbox die? I thought they were doing so well money-wise. But it's like, it's just one guy. Like, he often put a lot of his own money into it to keep it alive as well. It's, I don't know, like, seeing it from the other side, it's so obvious. But then... I suppose if you don't see that, it's really difficult to see that. Like, unless you buy it, it can't continue, can it? That's as simple as it is. And even like that, I think one of the biggest problems, it's actually one of the biggest problems with me too. The amount of passion that we have in this makes us blind business-wise. Yeah. And I don't know if you, if you feel the same, but I do know that a lot of people... They get somehow blinded by passion, if that makes sense. It's just like yeah, you, you want it definitely. to be so successful, and you put your you put everything in it, and then sometimes it just can't. Man, at, at the moment for me, as an example, I have family, and there's some things that need to be way more important in my than my passions. But I still so many times yeah. I I put it on the scale, and sometimes it's so hard to say no to the passion, yeah. but. <laughs> it shouldn't no, be like that definitely I, I've definitely been there myself like buying a camera for like you know too much money when I definitely don't have enough money to do that but it's like oh, I'm film some skating so I'm going to buy an expensive camera it's, it, it becomes a bigger priority than it should be I agree but it's just how it is isn't it <laughs> Scott tell me <laughs> what influences the way that you make your videos I'm not even talking about your skating but y you told me not in this interview but you told me that you work as a teacher in a hearty thing. Can you explain exactly yeah. what you do and what influences the way that you film or your videos? Okay. Um, so my job is like um, a university, but it's a specifically an arts university. And I teach on a course, which is basically graphic design. It's a little bit broader than that, but it's basically graphic design. So I teach. Um, my job role is mainly teaching Adobe stuff. So I teach like Photoshop, Illustrator, InDesign, um, after effects premiere like video like filming taking photos like all of that stuff you know like content creating basically mm -hmm. um so i teach them how to use all of that software but i also like teach i i say teach they don't call me a teacher because they'd have to pay more if i get called like a lecturer or a teacher but You're i mean i assistant. do it's called demonstrate. <laughs> yeah yeah it's called dem i'm a te technical demonstrator which is my term but it's teaching for sure um, but I also teach like uh, book making and like traditional like print making and you know all sorts of stuff like that. So that's basically what my job is. But what 
is great about that is that you know the more I like that I learn I learn more like you said before like passion drives a lot so the fact that I have to like find stuff out to edit the way I want to edit and then I can feed that back into my session so actually like even though sometimes I'm at work editing my own skate videos I'm actually teaching myself some stuff for the students so I I kind of feel guilty about it sometimes, but also at the same time, I know it's going to feed back into my system. So <laughs> my job kind of works with it quite well, to be fair. I need um, to interrupt so you good. there. I need to interrupt you there. What do your students think when they when they see you editing skate like inline skating videos, stunt skating videos <laughs> <laughs> yeah. on on um, on their classes? They, I mean. I know how cool rollerblading is, obviously, because I've been doing it for so long and I love it, but they don't seem to care. They don't, they don't give a shit. They, they'll see me editing or whatever and they'll be like, or they'll, they'll find out that I skate or whatever, they, they'll, that I rollerblade and they'll be like, oh, cool, you do stuff. You like, you skate. <laughs> you like, do yeah. stuff. Like, yeah, yeah, like you, you actually do something. I'm like, yeah. You're not and a vegetable. Like, oh. <laughs> and they're like, do you have any videos? Do you have any photos or anything online? I'm like, yeah, just like Google my name. You'll find something. Like, you know how easy Google is. Like, just Google my name, you find something. And that, that's where the conversation ends. They never end up looking. They never care. They don't care. <laughs> and that really surprises me. Because if I was if I was at uni and my one of my like, lecturers or teachers or said something like that, I'd be like, I'd be straight on the internet finding out. Like, I <laughs> want to know if they were crap and I could see them falling over. You know what I mean? It's like, they don't care. They Dude. literally don't care. So that's that's what you, that's the millennials, right? What, what, how old are your students? Because... A few um, years, like, I would say, sorry, uh, about 10 years ago, no more, fuck, I, sometimes I forget how old I am, like, <laughs> maybe like 12, 13 years ago, when I finished my graduation, my last year was an internship, and I studied to be a teacher, to be yeah. a sports teacher, so oh, on my gosh. last year, I used to live in the south of Portugal, and that, that was the time that I used to skate for USD, and that was my mm -hmm. party age. I used to skate, but I used to party a lot. So somehow, B Meg always used to post my party pictures. I don't know why. I always had that. <laughs> I don't know. I always ended up on B Meg. And my students, man, they always knew about it. So can you imagine? You'll go to class and then you see your teacher completely like I was always like, yeah, always. That was like I don't know why my skating pictures wouldn't show up. Just the party one. So <laughs> that's really funny. <laughs> anyway, so. You, I was asking I, about I, I mean, the age I of your students. I going out for that reason in my town because I just see students out in like, you know, a pub or a bar or something. Like, oh God, it's the worst thing. I, I don't <laughs> want to have that situation. So I don't. It's just easier not to. Okay, so tell me, how, how old are your students? Do you think... Um, they, when they start, they're usually about 18 and kind of finish 22. That's like the usual age where they like finish school and do their A-levels and then come to uni. But um, sometimes we get like mature students. I've got a student that's like... Uh, 39 we've had students we've had students 60 and stuff in the past uh, yeah probably it's interesting. It's probably all, sorry sorry you go for it sorry it's always interesting when they're older because they actually i know it seems ridiculous but they've chosen to be there like the young students are kind of they just come in and they're like right i'm gonna go to you what should i do or i didn't i didn't hate art at school so i'll do something like that and then they just you know they're going through the motions they don't really care they're just doing uni but the yeah. older students are actually like You know, they've lived a bit of life. They've realized they don't like their job and they want to change it or something. So they decide that they're going to do this. And it's so much nicer. It's refreshing. <laughs> and that's what I was going to ask you. Probably the guys, the older ones are the ones that when you tell them to Google your name, those are the ones that care. The young ones, if you think of it, the young ones, like if, if you're talking about an 18-year-old kid. So we know that there was a decline on inline skating, on rollerblading, stunt skating. <laughs> In yeah. like 2005, 2006, that's when it was the biggest decline. Well, by that time, they were around four or five. They weren't even on, on a computer yet. So they didn't no. even know what skating was. So for them, no. that's what you do. It's It was never cool somehow. Or it was for them. No, no, nowadays, crazy. they start. Now, some of them in some places, I know that in Barcelona, as an example, now you start seeing some young kids doing it as a cool thing, yeah. you know? Like the cool kids mm -hmm. start to do it, or there will be a lot more countries in the world because that friend of mine, Greg, the bodyboarder, always tells me the same, and it's the, it's exactly what I think nowadays too. Which yeah. is, there's no coolest thing than a shoe with wheels, man. If you think of it, it's the ultimate thing. Like, man, you move your legs and you go. You don't need a piece of wood. You don't need like a metal piece that you need to do cycling movements. It's just 
you move your feet and you go that's it yeah it's the coolest thing and then you like you do a little 180 and you're going backwards like, <laughs> it's so much fun like how do, how, do, how do other people not see that as fun i don't get it <laughs> they will see man they will see they'll they'll yeah. just need to try that's what we need to get them more like to try and that's that's why i think that what you're doing it's amazing because what you're doing it's somehow making skating look nice but it's not intimidating if that makes sense yeah. and that's okay. what i wanted to get so like when you see guys like roman abrati or like julian kudo they're amazing what they do is just like it's next level i can never imagine that i have a massive respect for all those guys it's not my style yeah. of skating i respect a lot what they do and i wish i was capable of doing it but at the yeah, same agreed. time and for the public for the young kids it's amazing they love to watch it but my question is and i'm not saying it, it's wrong we need all these guys because they are heroes and we need heroes but at the same time for yep. someone starting to skate somehow there's other types of skating that can be more appealing and i'm not saying that's your type of skating i guess it depends on everyone but having yeah. diversity it's amazing at the moment i would relate a lot more to the type of skating that you do because it'd be a lot more challenging yeah. for me you know it's like it's right there it's so close to what i can do but the amount of skill and the amount of time that you need on every single trick It's like sometimes I don't have the yeah. time in my day. That's what I think. Probably you, do, <laughs> probably you do the first try, you know? What I'm trying to say here is that you can see it closer. When I look at Roman Abrati or when I look at Julian Kudo, for me, it's just like out of my league, you know? So yeah, that's what I was trying to say. I think your type of skating, it's really important. And a lot more guys like uh, Bobby Spasov that we made also a skate talk a few weeks ago. Yeah, Guys like you guys, are amazing to watch and I, I think you guys re are really needed in this world but where do you where do you get the creativity for those tricks is it skateboarding is it all coming from your head comes from your classes from your students where does that come from um i think what you just said was quite um a good point like uh accessible and i think the reason why it's so accessible is because you don't need a skate spot to do it necessarily. Like, you know, like a traditional spot, like a ledge or a rail. I mean, I, and I think that answers the question in terms of like, I think that's why, because I, we, look where I live, you know, there's a few ledges and rails, but you kind of run out of stuff that you can do on, the, on those few spots. Right. So you kind of have to think, right, let's just go. So many times we've gone out on missions, not knowing where we're going and being like, I wonder what we can find. And then you don't, anything but you're like that kind of makes you do something that you wouldn't usually do you know like pulling up to a spot that's not really grindable or it doesn't really have something initially interesting about it but you're like the area is cool and there's got to be something to do there so you your mind creates something out of it you know so yeah. i think it's kind of more i think the what me and harry realized together i mean we don't uh, we don't we have a very similar view of skating but it's not exactly the same you know So mm -hmm. if you'd like turn up at a spot and I think we realized quite quickly together that the spot has to drive a trick, like not in the way of like, okay, I've got to this rail. What's the best trick to do on it? Because that's a very linear way of looking at skating. But like, what's the most interesting thing I can do in this area? Like that's kind of more how we look at it. I think I look at it at least. You yeah. know, so I think I think that's where I mean, in terms of influences in skating, like there's so many people that I could list where like their skating influences me, but I think it comes more down to like just the spot. You know, the spot has to tell you. It sounds ridiculous, but the spot has to kind of tell you what is the coolest thing to do there. I understand that it totally makes sense to me, especially the way that you started answering, which is yeah, when you told me that you kind of run out of spots that that leads me yeah. to two questions one of it one of them is do you used to be like the type of skater that used to spin to grinds in big rails and stuff like that because i don't know i never met you back then and i don't um, know if you were that type of skating but it seems like you have a really good background and skill on skating that's one of the questions and the second one is you kind of say that somehow that was one of the things that made you start looking at other spots but then I see a lot of your stuff in skate park and I'm not saying this in a negative way. I love it. 
in a really tiny plaza skate park and you the way yeah. that you skate is just like it's just different from people the way that people use the skate parks with stunt skates <laughs> thank you that's a that's a high compliment i'll take that as a compliment um, it is. um but yeah i mean i probably haven't been trying to do i mean i try not to separate skating that i used to do and the skating now because i guess it's all led to one place i suppose but i definitely have done my fair share of rails and you know switch ups and ha what hammers and drops and all come that on kind of you stuff. didn't and answer still... me would you spin to win could you five four could you four fifty real no okay you're welcome I mean, to my world I, <laughs> I, <laughs> the thing is i i really would like to have been able to back then but i i So my excuse for that is that I spin the opposite way to one Royale, so I never really liked it. <laughs> Come on, I, I know you can do switch Royale tricks. I know way. you can do switch tricks. I've be, I've <laughs> seen the way that you skate. You can do everything like regular and switch with that amount of skill. You could. Okay, I'm, I'm glad that they come across that way because that is not the truth. But um, <laughs> uh, yeah, I definitely. I mean, spin to it. Yeah, like 360 top stars. Yeah, yeah, like I definitely have done my fair share of that type of skating for sure. I was like a park rat. For you know, seven or eight years of skating, I worked in a skate park and I basically lived there. Did you, you get nine hundreds? Could you do nine hundreds? Yeah, I had nine hundreds. Not, not, not <laughs> We got Tony Hawk in the house. <laughs> I have done some nine hundreds, but not consistently. But I was Come on. kind of more. Yeah, I used to do front flips and misty flips. No, 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 no. Your eat. students, your students want to know that you do nine hundreds, just like Tony Hawk. Come on, that's what they want. <laughs> yeah, <that's it. laughs> <laughs> yeah but yeah i definitely up until you know a couple of years ago i was definitely into the rail. I, i love grinding the rail like i can't like it may not seem like that now but i i love grinding rails and i love um you know do, doing like a I don't know, like a, a spin to a grind on a ledge or something it's, it's cool isn't it I like it's still that's where yeah, we came it's from it's challenging man that. that's the way that, i, I yeah. guess that's i keep saying the same that's that's why we skate we, we like to challenge ourselves and if you start going yeah. way too much on the type of skating that you do now in a few years you're going to want to go out of it and that's that's just like how we work yeah it's just yeah it, you you get bored you've got to have variety man like yeah. you know like i was saying earlier like going backwards is really fun just as much as like doing a back row on a ledge is really fun to do like just because it's not creative it's this well fun to do that so yeah Yeah, but it, you, but then again, you can find a spot where that thing can be the most creative thing. You know, it's just there's always different ways of looking at things. In my opinion, of course. Yeah. Now tell me. Yeah. Going a little bit more out of the RT part, what skates are you skating right now? Mm -hmm. Um, I've got at the moment I'm skating a lot of V13s. I've got like five different setups, just purely because of color. Like, <laughs> I just like to have lots of different colored skates at the same time, but they're all V13. But I mean, I'm definitely, I'm really not a skate nerd when it comes to setups and things. I don't really care. No, I just it use... seems, but it's just, it's just like, I, I think any of the, you know, the more, the top skate companies, like you could wear any of them and still be able to skate. Right. So it's kind of, they're just such a simple, basic skate. If they're good enough for Broska, they're good enough for me. That's kind of how I look at it. <laughs> That's a good way to see it. So are you yeah. going to skate the damn skates now? <laughs> uh, uh, I'm intrigued by them for sure, but I, I de not enough to pre-order them or anything. I mean, I'd have to see. It'd be tricky to know what size to get as well, I think. So I, I've got quite big feet. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm six foot five, so I've got fairly big feet. Um, so What's your UK size? My UK size is nine, but that's kind of I've got intuition liners, so I can get as small as possible. Because yeah, you can get medium. No, from what I know, that's the that's the size of Robbie Pitts. That would be. Yeah, you yeah. don't really want much bigger than that, do you? It's going to not be very nice. Well, man, you look at Miguel. Do you know Miguel Ramos? Oh yeah. Miguel is skating the biggest, the biggest size. When you look at him skating, he looks good somehow. Really? I, don't know. Yeah. I would never have guessed that. Yeah, it's just like man. I guess. I guess the skater is what makes the skater looks skate looks good. I wouldn't say that yeah. the damn skates are the best, or I wouldn't say that the skates that I'm skating right now, the USD sevens or whatever, are the best. It's just it, again, like you said, if they're good enough for like 
some of the pros getting them, they can be good enough for us. So it's just whatever. Yeah. You, you end I mean, up getting used to it. Yeah. I, I mean, like the M12 slash V13. I mean, people like Danny Beer skate them, Robbie Pitts doing creative stuff. And then you've got the Kelsos both skating them who are incredible at like technical stuff. And then you've got Broscow and Sizemore doing massive drops. And they, I mean, they can do all the types of skating, can't they? So and now you got you Niels, can't go wrong with that. And now you got Niels Jansen skating them. And you know, it's yeah. going to be like, the craziest biggest stuff yeah full speed and yeah just different that's, styles of skating that's a good move for them i think taking joe atkinson and nils that's a good that's two good choices i think who do you think is going to be the third one uh was there not a third one already mentioned i swear there was another person no there's there's a, a, another kid but it's just like it wasn't pro there was also oh, shad okay. ornish i think Oh yeah, but uh, I there think was it'll be amateur, another like competition style skate because obviously those two are like they are legit like street certified, but they're also killing it in the park. So I think okay. it'll be another person like that, which I can't think. I'll of put I'll put my, my name. Head, but... I'll put my money in one guy, Dominic Wagner. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's not a bad show. <laughs> I don't know. That's, that's not a bad guess. <laughs> I don't know if it's going to happen or not. If there would be a fourth one and if we'd need to be American, even if he's not showing up in that many places, I would say Jeff Stockwell, but we'll see. <laughs> yeah. That would be a well, good... Well, maybe like... Maybe something like... It depends on how they're, if they're paying or whatever, but I feel like Montre could be a good choice because he's, again, like street certified but kills it in competitions like i, I wouldn't see montre i don't know maybe i'm wrong and yes i, I hope it doesn't because i also i still work with power slides <laughs> 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 yeah. i hope he doesn't leave i love to have that guy on on that <laughs> yeah. side but still i couldn't really imagine him skating such a slim skate but maybe it's just me maybe obviously no. he would skate good with every skate so yeah i agree If you Sometimes look at, it, if you think of him like skating memes, like everyone else was like rock and roll and all that, and then you would see him fully gangster, just yeah. killing it. So I don't know. I guess yeah. he's just way too good. Tell me, he's too good, Scott. Have you ever got like badly hurt, or does that? That was, like, I guess, that was one of the questions on on Facebook too. The <laughs> did any injury ever? made a difference on the way that you skate nowadays we didn't spoke about it or you didn't refer it but uh i did see that question and i know exactly what you're referring to and if people know me they know exactly what he's referring to and i did have i mean in terms of like injuries you would expect like a broken leg or like you know a broken bone but i i broke my urethra which is yeah I the know. uh You know, and that's kind of like, as a, as a male, oh, I guess it's bad for a female too, but, you know, that's kind of one of the worst things that you could possibly do, I swear. Um, so the simple answer to that question is, yeah, it obviously changed the way I skate because not that it made me, uh, well, I don't really skate handrails in the same, um, like I said before, I love skating handrails. I love just doing like a backslide down a rail. It was great, but I really need to consider it way more before I do. And the, you know, the passion has to be really high or the, the idea for the rail or whatever has to be really, really good for me to have to consider grinding a rail now because not because of being scared. I mean, there is increased fear for sure, but, um, is it, it a higher risk if you fall on the same region again, or it's just, there's no, it's just in your yeah. head. No, no, that would be for sure because it would be, it's definitely weaker than it was in terms of I, I had they literally had to operate on it they had to take skin out of the inside of my mouth and, and like you know reconstruct it with that skin so that's like it's not it's not the same as it was before oh god like li literally just the tube it wasn't anything else rather than the tube inside me but it's like what a, what a nightmare injury oh I can never imagine like no man did that happen in the rail like you said Yeah, yeah. Like, I mean, I've, I've had a few bad that fall many times before, and it definitely wasn't the worst one that I've had, but it just must have been specifically on that point, and it was just nah. uh, for like four months, it was completely not great. But, uh, it's 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 yeah. weird. Like, a lot of times for people who's scared of skating rails, it's just like 
it doesn't need to happen on a rail that's something that's one of the first no, things it can true. happen on anything and at the same time so many times we see people falling like one leg, one leg of each side of the rails and so many times you don't hit it anything yeah just like it's just it's hard because most of the time it's like on your leg it's harder to it's easier to to get hurt on the coccyx than actually where people yeah, are scared yeah for sure but a very can specific happen. point <laughs> it can happen but yeah it can happen <laughs> i did bleed my... so i had my i had my <laughs> my time <laughs> yeah it's, it, it's just one of those things that as it's happening you're like oh, i can't is this actually happening i can't believe it but the answer to the question is yeah it did mainly because it would be fucking stupid for me to do it again like <laughs> i would be i would be an idiot to do that injury again Yeah. And the doctor's even said that. He's like, yeah, you can skate again. I'm not going to tell you not to skate, but he's like, it would be really bad for you to do it again. So, <laughs> yeah. Okay. But you know what? So I, Some I of mean, the I tricks that you do still scare me a lot more than skating around. Like those... Yeah, ex exactly. I mean, it's, if I've got an idea <laughs> and, you know, I feel like it's worth that risk, then I'll do it. And, you know, like you said before, like passion will take over. And it's like, even Harry has said to me before while filming, he's like, mate, are you... Like, I don't know. And I'm like, nah, like, and I'll, I'll do it. But that's just what happens, isn't it? I mean, people do dangerous tricks um, because they just want to nah, do it. There's nah, not let really me, an explanation, let me, There's there? one trick that's stuck in my mind, and it's the most basic thing. It's probably ankle high, uh, in an ankle high ledge. I wouldn't even say mm -hmm. if it's a ledge. It's just like a, a simple back torque to backwards willy. You know that one, right? Oh, uh, yeah, in the skate park. Yes. Yeah, I, I, that trick doesn't make any sense in my head. And <laughs> I, seriously, I've tried it, just stole it, and just to try to understand the movement, and it just doesn't work. See, for me, and I'm not even a, a skater, like a, a rail skater anymore, but I would be a mm. million times less scared <laughs> of doing a rail, and I don't skate rails that much anymore than doing that. Because it's just, for me, that's just instant death. I know that even if it's a super yeah. low ledge, it's it, most of the time it's more dangerous for me when I try to do a top side or if I try to do a, a backwards willy on a really tiny ledge, I'm going to fall backwards. Yeah. And then it just hurts so much more. I'd rather fall on the rail. Yeah, I mean, I'm not, <laughs> I'm definitely not, if you've watched much of my skating, I'm not really, like, I don't do many toe and heel rolls and stuff like that, but sometimes I get an idea where it involves one and it makes it so much harder for me to do that trick because I don't ever practice, I can't yeah. do them. I don't, I'm, I'm not very good at them, but I had that idea as well as, like, the back, back so, side backslide to the heel roll. <laughs> no, and I was like, no way. So you're telling me that you don't know how to do the basic one, but you think of a most complex one. So you need to learn... <laughs> in the moment and you learn straight to the complex one yeah that's sort of, i mean that's sort of true i mean <laughs> I, I, don't, i i don't do many heel or toe rolls that's definitely true that i don't okay do but i'm just just breaking it out for someone that doesn't visually see it something way yeah. more visual imagine you want to do a 720 topsail but you cannot do a 360 topsail So you go straight to the 720 <laughs> it's something like that basically it's a, obviously it's a less vi it's a There's a little bit less risk in it, but still, that can be a lot of risk. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but yeah, it's kind of one of those things where I just had the idea and was like, that works perfect. And, you know, like that's why it's a cool trick because the grind kind of goes straight into it. It's kind of it just it makes sense when you watch it. But then when I got to the skate, like, uh, it's not. <laughs> I don't know if I can do it. So it just takes a little bit of, um, you know, just. <laughs> That is one of the tricks that you kind of have to just commit and it will work, you know. <laughs> I know, I can't imagine. I just, I can't see myself doing it. Now, let's go straight to a question. Let's fight right now. I'm going to get uh, the boxing gloves and let's talk about <laughs> this. Do you okay. skate? Would you skate Solomon skates? <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't. I mean, I don't really have anything against. <laughs> no, man, I'm, I'm kidding. They've never been for me. I, I like, I just. Yeah, I don't know. They've never really been to me. And I don't... I kind of... You know... I don't care. <laughs> I don't care about Solomon's at all. That's no, no, the, the thing is, like, yeah. I'm just making this question. I'm talking about the boxing gloves. Because the truth is, for the type of skating that you do, you remind me of mm -hmm. at least two guys that used to skate with Solomon's skates. Yeah. 
would be Micah Yeager, mm -hmm. and the other one would be Nick Regal. Somehow, I wow. don't know why, but somehow I can see you like um, the next level of what they're doing, being Nick Regal, Nick Regal the first one, and then Micah Yeager a few years later, somehow like a more developed <laughs> Nick Regal with a different style. And then a few yeah. years later, you, I would see it like the next step somehow. And they both skated Solomon, so I could actually see you skating Solomon. And a lot of people, I made that that video about killing the industry with Solomon. A lot of people really mm -hmm. took it the wrong way. And I don't mind. People see it the way they want. Yeah. But there's a reason for it. And I guess we spoke about it when we spoke about Dirt Box and about one of the reasons why things happen. So... Yeah. yeah, I guess people are I mean, free to think I, whatever they want. Yeah, it's kind of there's there's two ways that I can look at it. I guess like I buy a lot of clothes from charity shops and stuff because it's a shame for things to go to waste, right? Like why chuck away clothes when you or just buy brand new clothes when you could reuse something else? Like yeah, that you know, makes total sense good to thing. me. So which is the same for skates. So I kind of see that, but at the same time, you're completely right. Like how they can't keep selling skates if no one's buying them. Like they can't keep making them if no one's buying them. So I I do get it. And it just, I mean, I would probably skate Solomon's if I was into them, but I just don't really care about them that much. So <laughs> <laughs> it just works out that I kind of support the industry because I have to. Because I like the skates. So you you didn't want, no, but now you don't anymore because Valos are not working anymore. True. Come on, you're killing yeah, true. it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I did consider buying them skates, but I've got like, honestly, I've got about five or six skates that are set up. So it's like, I don't need a seventh pair of skates. I don't. I don't even really skate that it, much anymore. It's not I'm like Valo is that, man. Ridiculous. When I'm saying that, like, you can obviously always get the soul plates from Roches, from Roses. Yeah. People also make fun of me saying Roches. So, <laughs> from Roses. So, it's, I'm, I'm obviously just making fun of the whole thing. Uh, yeah. Let me move away from here before we fight. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, what did you f thought about the dirt box wheels, the really hard ones? Were you skating those? Was it, were it 95 or 96? Uh, they were 55, 95. Were you skating flat on those? Uh, I, uh, I skated those flat for quite a long time. Um, I always struggled with flat setup. Like I always wanted to be able to skate flat and I struggled with it for a long time. But then I thought the only way we'd really do it is to just do it so for about a year or two i can't remember about a year or two i just skated solidly flat and then i was completely fine with it it was you know it's a good thing and those wheels definitely help they're really solid and that's where you know like some of the wheels I did that came from those hard wheels just like playing around with them and you know being able to slide on them a bit more so yeah i did i genuinely liked those wheels and the flat profile i mean I don't, like i said i'm not really a skate nerd i don't really I don't really think about it too much, but the flat profile really helped as well for the kind of wheel slides and things like that. I actually watched one of your which was about, um, I can't remember what you called it. It was like Magic Rocker or something like oh, that. Yeah, having... Have you tried it? It's actually cool. No, but I was watching it. I was like, that is genius. Like, but I, it wasn't so on sense. purpose, man. I was just, it, it was weird. It was before this year's Winter Clash. I was with, I was with Robbie Pitts in, in Amsterdam. And I changed the wheels. I was staying in this guy, Kev Kevin. I was staying at Kevin's house. And I changed mm -hmm. the wheels. I had these, new, these two different sets of undercovers. And once I changed the wheels, I realized that they had different profiles. And once I put them down, I was like, damn it. They're like not even flat. But then when I yeah. twisted the skate to one of the sides, I was like, wait, that's cool. Because when you turn, then you got like this rockering. And then yeah. I, the magic rockering was just a funny name. But it, I, it actually, it's actually cool. Obviously, it doesn't last yeah. forever. Because, mm. especially if you're skating street a lot. Not that I skate street that much still nowadays. So, in a park will last me forever. <laughs> Do you find it um, uh, difficult to skate street now? Like, it uh, sounds like a ridiculous question, but is it easier for you to just go and hang at a park and skate there? Because I have not been skating street much either. And it's because... I just don't have as many people to skate with. So, like, just I going guess out it's and trying to find like, a weird spot is tricky. Yeah, I think so. You know what? I I guess, like, since I moved to Cape Town, which, like I said, it was about three years ago, it's been changing a lot and makes me sad somehow. I used When I first moved here, I loved it, man. 
my two best friends would be Earl Abrams and this guy that I just told you, Greg Fraser, were living here. Yeah. We used to skate at least twice a week. We used to go street skating at night, and we we used to do street skating during the weekend. Some at least once mm-hmm. per weekend, and obviously, like since one year ago, I have a baby, so it's not as easy. But I still find ways to go out and skate. Yeah. But those two guys, one moved to Johannesburg, which is a capital, and a lot of people don't have idea of the size of South Africa, but he's living basically a thousand and eight hundred kilometers from me, which is basically impossible Whoa. for us to skate together. And the other one, yeah. Greg, the bodyboarder, the one that actually showed me stuff about you before. First, yeah. Greg is now living in a farm, so far from here, like two and a half hours. So in the end, I end up being here. Of course, I have a lot of friends here and a lot of people that I skate with, but those mm-hmm. it's kind of like, you, you know, you have those guys that you skate with and you completely fully relate with when you skate, and then it's kind of like yeah. they're gone, and then you feel like, damn it. And then a few weeks ago, I was in Portugal, and that felt, I have to admit, that felt so good because I was in Portugal and two of my best friends One of them yeah. was was living in London and he moved to Portugal. And now everyone is kind of like the crew is getting back in Portugal. And I'm like, damn it. <laughs> 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 I might need to do something about it. Anyway, we're not there yeah. yet. <laughs> But w- answering your question, like about like skating a park, I guess with time, you, you, you end up finding more fun. And it's all about the fun. Yeah. Of it. You're not, if you obviously, yeah. if you want to get some clips or if you want to film something, you'll go outside and you'll make the struggle of skating this spot, and then you need to drive or to skate or whatever for five, ten minutes to the next spot, and you'll do it. Or you go specifically to yeah. a spot for a line. But if you are in a park, you can be with five or ten more people, and everyone is skating each own spot, and everyone is having fun, and you still clap hands, and you still like even if they're skating something completely different, you know. And I guess with yeah. time, you're gonna end up going that way. And wanting or not, skate parks are done for that. So it's a good thing. Yeah. I, I think it's, I wouldn't call myself a park rat, even if I haven't been skating street for a while. <laughs> yeah, no, that's fair enough. I mean, it's exactly the same for me. Like I've got, I've got um, really good friends here that still skate, but not as much like, you know, me and Harry, it was a really good, uh, we just had the same vision for skating, really, like just going out and not even planning spot or anything and just going being is fine you know and it's like not having that is just means i end up going and skating parks a lot more, which i mean i've definitely stepped off the gas a little bit in terms of like making stuff i haven't filmed anything for ages and that's really not like me but i'm like, waiting i'm we'd... so waiting on that <laughs> <laughs> no uh. but i mean i think i could burn myself out a little bit in terms of just like we'd make an edit and literally before that one's even finished we'd be filming the next one you know and it's kind of i don't know maybe i have two things for you i have to ask you i have one it's to ask you for something and the other one no one is a question the other one is um something that i would like to see (laughs) so the request the request the request would be the request would be Come on, I just want to see a 900. I don't care. Even if it's to a foam pit. Oh, just, just, no, even if it's to a foam pit, just to start an edit. Just for the fun of it. I really... <laughs> you, did you ever watch... Um, we did this thing called Residence Only, where it's like a little competition. Yes, yes, yes. I remember that. I remember thing. that. I did a 720 in that on the little kicker. Yeah. And I really... It, it was meant to be a 900. I really wanted to do a 900, but I just couldn't... It wasn't big enough. I, I couldn't get enough okay. height. You, you, I, you need to put that little kicker down a step. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But that would have been the first 900 that I would have done in probably 10 years at least. Oh, so, come I mean, on. I now it's been like 12 years. So now it's going to be yeah. the first 900 in 12 years. You can tell your students, man. Come on. Think of it, Tony Hawk. Be- yeah. Well, <laughs> no, okay. Just- um, if I find the right ramp, I'll do one. But I don't know. <laughs> man, I'm, I'm obviously just joking. It would be cool because it would be something, you know, like that's something that I was going to come next with usually you come with things that people are not expecting and that's obviously why i said the 900 thing is obviously a joke and if you could do it, it would be mm-hmm. amazing imagine like something like people isn't really expecting you to do it and that's that's why yeah. i was so surprised obviously again like i said before you have the skill so you can see it the way that you skate but the question is After being so long without making an edit, don't you feel some pressure? Because from the guys that I know, and, and I, I know quite a lot of pros that struggle with the same, and one of them is is actually Richie Eisler. You know that Richie, whenever he puts something, 
it used to be so good that mm -hmm. he put it so much pressure on himself that somehow after a while it becomes a problem because even if you want to put stuff you, you always want your next thing to be better and it, sometimes it's a lot better but in your eyes because you're skating every day and you're watching the clips and you watch the clips over and over and over after a while they get you think that they are boring about yeah. that's what you think about your clips but if anyone else sees them they're like gold you know and yeah yeah get that i completely get don't that don't you like feel when that you're pressure kind of now stacking for an edit um i probably do i mean subconsciously i haven't really thought about it until you said it but i probably do i mean strangers like you i think for me was a bit of a peak that i'm probably i realized when i made it that i probably couldn't make anything as like that again maybe i don't know mm -hmm. like I'm not, i mean not that the skating won't be as good just i don't know i just when i finished it i think i realized that i'm not going to be skating as much as that and i don't think you know i kind of i think it was a build up to that point of like all my ideas went into that so then suddenly mm -hmm. i was kind of had nothing i had no clips and i had no ideas and it's kind of all empty again which was kind of nice so then the next thing that i made was king's did that on purpose because i was like i've not done anything for a while i need to do something and i did it in the park so it wasn't really competing with my own edit if that makes sense yep so now i haven't filmed anything for ages so i don't know how i feel about it i would like to make something but i'm not really in the situation i haven't got me and harry would go out like you know three or four times a week and we would just film and now i go out skating quite a lot not filming which i never ever did before but it quite it feels quite nice to just like not do that so I don't know. I've got a lot of ideas again and I've got a lot of, you know, tricks that I want to do and spots that I've seen and I want to, but I'm not, it feels weird to not be in any rush to do it. I don't know. I don't know why that is, but I just haven't been skating as much. I don't know. Yeah, I guess whenever, yeah, you, whenever I you start, the ideas will come. I believe that. Yeah, exactly. And like, I, to answer your question, I do probably feel like there is a bit of pressure on that, but you know, fuck it. You know what <laughs> I can it? tell you? Is that, that's one of the reasons why, Wanting or not, I respect skateboarders, at least some of them so much. You look at the, yeah. those older guys, those ones with the state with the legend status, man, and most of the times whenever they put a new section, it's just worse than the one before. It it, it is yeah. the way it is. Most of them it is, but they keep putting it out there. And a lot of times when they get older, they skate balls, they do classic tricks. They, they they focus on what they call style and most of the times what they call style it's being way worse than they used to be before and way yeah. more out of control than you used to be before but for them that that's like imagine those 10 tries that they do that trick that's the one that they feel the best so they put it out there and that's yeah. sometimes that's we need in general to to be more okay with us aging you know obviously we need a new yeah. we need a newer generation but we need to be okay with us getting older because yeah it yeah. is the way it is <laughs> i mean it is a little bit different for them in terms of they continue to do it because they're getting paid you know they got age yeah. sorry scott i lost it there a little bit i i think even though Uh, it's not really about money. Sorry, today, Scott. Can you just can you just repeat? Paid, they? I, I lost you when where you yeah. said it's different for for them. Sorry. Uh, yeah. So it's different, I think, for them because they continue to get paid, and if if they stop making edits and videos, they are probably not going to get paid anymore. So even if they feel like it's the right or wrong thing to do to continue making worse and worse edits, they're getting paid regardless. Aren't they? Yeah. So I feel like sometimes. I, I'm really like I always call it Eminem effect because he should have stopped making albums at the Eminem show probably do you know <laughs> what I mean and like now like I feel like kids like that are into rap probably look at Eminem and like he's crap at he's not very good at you know he's not a very good rapper or whatever but it's like they don't know they don't know what he did like who he, what he was because he made shit after it do you know what I mean and I feel like there's there's definitely some bladers that have got that going on as well you know and you don't You don't want to ruin their own legacy, you know. Okay, that makes sense. Somehow, I kind of feel I don't want to name any names. It's a bit harsh, isn't it? But yeah, kind of. There's definitely some bladers out there where they fucking made some really good stuff back in the day and continue to make stuff that wasn't as good. It's like it just makes you forget, doesn't it? That's, yeah, but at the same, but shame, I, I, I I totally understand what you're saying. But at the same time, 
it is what it is, you know, like it's dealing with reality and probably if you're not skating for any brand, nowadays that, that's what's going to happen with all of us skaters because in general, if we're all going to keep skating and the way that social media is going, especially nowadays, everyone has social media no matter what, you might be more or less present, but the way that it's going, all of us are going to get older and all of us that really love this, we're all going to keep doing this. And there will be a time that even if we do it every single day, there will be a decline. This is like a negative talk yeah. to have, but in the end, it's going to happen, <laughs> you know? It's like we might yeah. not be working with brands anymore or we might not want to represent anything or any sport, or anything, but we're going to be doing it because we love it. And if we put it in social media, it's obviously going to look a lot better, a, a lot worse than yeah. it used to be. So I guess it's something yeah. that we need to learn how to deal with it. I understand the Eminem effect yeah. that you're saying, especially if they're getting paid for all that stuff. And yeah, yeah. sometimes we need to learn when it's the time to to drop a project or something like that, at least to, to be the face of a project. But somehow, I guess we're all going to keep skating and content we always gonna be watching content from people that used to be our heroes you know like dustin latimer yeah. still looks amazing i don't know if you saw the clip last yeah. week or two weeks ago yeah but probably yeah. in 20 years even if he is amazing probably uh, for dustin maybe i will say 40 maybe in 40 years dustin latimer will will look bad on skates you know <laughs> yeah i mean they're probably imagine if he was still making like he didn't stop at what was his last one probably uh accident on machines or did he or no bang i can't maybe. imagine I if guess. he carried on making videos after that they probably I, you couldn't keep that snap or maybe i don't think he's snapper, so he's completely different i guess that he was already but. he was already getting so creative with his skating and somehow that's one of the problems that i see when it comes to re to creativity skating like yeah to exploring the extremes of creativity obviously i don't maybe there's no ends for creativity but you start coming you start going out of normal you know and somehow yeah. i'll give you a few examples of people that started going different from what everyone else used to be doing like what was the name of that canadian guy that used to do parkour on inline skates oh uh matthew Ledeau. yeah you, you saw yeah. him going in a way that no one else was going but for him to progress after that you know I don't know. Yeah, I couldn't see something above that. And I'm not saying that he did anything wrong. It, what he did was amazing. And then another guy, obviously completely different because he used to be the cleanest skater and then slowly started changing, would be Omer Weissung. Omer used to be amazingly skilled and then he started going like after a few years and he was heavier and all that. He started going to, to a, yeah. a weirdly different... Um, creative skating and then he went to a way that he was kind of like doing flips against walls to flip back and for a lot of people that was just dumb but in the end he was having fun you know yeah uh, and I don't know what's what would be coming after that so Dustin was kind of no. like the same like Dustin was just going into a, a level of skating that I couldn't see what was coming next and I don't know yeah do you think that happened to Farmer as well because Farmer like you know, if you think from words to bang, how he reinvented himself ridiculously every time. And like, he got like so much, there was so much development each time between those videos. And then suddenly it's like, he skates kink rails now. And yeah. like, there was maybe just a plateau to his creativity. And it was like, you can't, you can't just keep doing that every time. Because that's, I, you know. I just have so can't. much respect for what Chris Farmer does. I, I don't even know what to expect, but every time that I watch him, I don't know if you saw that latest section he did again in the snow, like he did a few years ago. What I see with Chris Farmer is, first of all, I have massive respect for this guy for the amount of passion that he has because when everyone mm -hmm. came and left and left and whatever, he's still here. He didn't left one single day, you know, he's here. He's loyal yeah. to what, to our sport and he's one for sure one of those guys that i i said like about legends that need to be respected because he's here for us he's been doing it and trying to represent us the best that he can obviously you can see that it i wouldn't say he doesn't have the same amount of skill but he went to a certain type of skating i remember when i first saw his stuff i think it was vg19 now, I saw it before. Yeah. I, I think I saw it before, but in VG19, that's when he has a, when he had that section sk skating. I think it was on rollerblades and Solomon STIs. I think it was yeah. so good. He could do everything both ways. You know, like 
I'm not saying that he can't anymore. I think he can still do it. And that's what I was saying about that snow video part that he came out like a few weeks ago. He went, yeah, I think I did see that. It's just weird. I, I just don't know what to think about Chris Farmer. I just, I just think he's super, super talented. But probably like you said, you wouldn't see the same amount of progression now after skating for so long as you used to see. No, yeah, you sa- can't same, sa- to do same that. with David Sizemore. David Sizemore progressed in a completely different way. He progressed in like control and style because at first mm-hmm. David Sizemore, every time that you would see him, you would he would be spinning 180 more into a grind or it would yeah. be with completely different color pants, more and more flashy. <laughs> I, I'm not saying this in a bad way, man. He was a kid and he grew nah. up to something that It's completely different where everyone respects him and is like even like right now is like have you seen his last video yeah oh, cool. that's the best thing that's been released in a while isn't it it's really know. good just way too Don good. Bruce man Don Bruce is next yes. level yes so Don Bruce is one of those guys I'm s- he's been surprising me every single time that I see Dom yeah. I've been a huge fan of Dom for like at least four years I guess since he won yeah The, no more than that since he won the the winter clash juniors the the summer clash juniors i think yeah and since then it, every single time that i watch him is better and better and better and better and just yeah and like that last streak i don't even know what to think about it obviously a few years ago a lot more people would do it but it just i don't know man it, he's he's a weird one isn't he because he's like he's so rated everybody knows how good he is but at the same time he's like underrated how has he not had a pro boot he's definitely how he's not had like skater of the year or anything ever like he's 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 gonna get well, there he's, he's still like young he's really young he's gonna, he's gonna get there he's really yeah, really young i would love to speak with him on one of these skate talks soon and it's getting there I, i've i've seen him a few times and i would love to do with dom i would love to sit with him instead of doing it via phone or something i would really yeah. love to sit with him and do one of those it's gonna he's come got really he's got a really um It's got enthusiasm that's really it's like it's, it catches, doesn't it? It's like I don't know, man. That last he, part, especially when he's talking about skating, dude. When he made that 720, he lands it and then he jumps into the water. You know what I felt? <laughs> it made me so proud to be a skater. You know, you watch yeah. that and that thing was like, I'm proud to do these things to put these wheelie boots. That's what I felt when yeah, I saw yeah. that, and it's just like, yes, that's all I can say. Yeah, it's a bit of personality, wasn't it? Though? Yeah, that's amazing. You know, I love that. Okay, let me who, go. Let well, me what's ask, your favorite? Sorry, sorry, tell me, tell me, tell me. Sorry, go on. I was going to ask you a question. Like, what? who are your top five right now? Like, in Blaine, as it stands at the moment. Yeah. I always, we're like, me and my friends always have the conversations like, who's top five? Like, who's oh, best man, in five I, right I'm, now? It's I always find it kind so of hard for me at the moment. Okay, there's one guy that will, it's been one of my favorites even if he's not skating forever <laughs> that's yeah. john elliott <laughs> wanting okay, or cool. wanting or not john elliott it's i guess it's going to be there forever and then it goes so he's, on he's in your current top five that's that's it like that's, yeah still is yeah, i think it's going to be forever in my current top five because he's one of the guys that made me see skating the way that i see nowadays for sure cool Then guys, that I would say the guys that I go and I watch their Instagram probably and I want to see what they're doing and stuff like that. Let me see. One of them is Richie. Wanting or not, I love yeah. that guy. The way that he does it and what he's been trying to do. Sometimes I just like, I just wish he, he could put more content out there, which is now doing it. But I totally understand, man. I totally understand yeah. the way he does it. And is I don't know. Sometimes it's hard for me to understand He has got unbelievable skill. On yes, his that's the thing. Skates. That's the thing. But you know, unbelievable. But when we're talking about yourself, sometimes it's not that you don't see it. It's because you care so much about what the others are going to see about you, and that's really important. And I think I lost that along the way. I just don't care what people think about me, so I'll just do it. Yeah. So sometimes for me, it's hard to see that, but I have a massive respect for what he does and for his amount of skill. And when I mean he does, it's not, not just skating. And when, I'm, when I talk about people in my top five skaters, I don't talk just about the level of skating. You know, it's more than that. Yeah. And then I would say Don Bruce would be in my top five for sure too. Good. Then I have like two more. Job. I have I have two to go. 
<laughs> Damn it. <laughs> now it's hard. <laughs> those last two, let me think of it. It's really hard to do. It's, let it's me, let me see those, those last two. The last two. Uh, Eugen Ennin has to be. It's just, okay. it's, it's like when I used to do more switch ups, is like what I never dream of being possible, you know? Is above yeah. what I always thought that could be possible to do on skates. Does that make sense to yeah. you? Yeah, no, I completely agree. It's, and when you start like watching it and then you kind of like clock which way he's doing a certain <laughs> trick and then you realize that one was switch at some point, you're like, what? He, he again has unbelievable skill. On yeah, his it's skates. Like, way it's too good. And then other guy, let me see. I would need to go for a co super complete skater, someone that can do a little bit of everything everywhere. I don't mm -hmm. even know. I don't even know. There's a lot, man. I, there's one guy that I respect a lot, and I wouldn't say he's the best aggressive skater or he's the best at free skating, but he's just everywhere and he's just good at everything. I would say probably Sam Crofts. And okay. it, it, I, I love what he's doing, you know? And if I know that you've been skating with him or I believe that you skated with him. And mm -hmm. the way that he looks at skating, I respect what he does a lot. So yeah. it would be in between him, but then... There's more people, man. I don't know. I don't know. I haven't really skated with Sam Cross like recently. I skated with them when I was younger a bit, but lately I haven't. And I feel like I would be scared. He does some scary stuff. Yeah, but it's the it's his <laughs> attitude towards those. You know, it's just like he's doing it yeah. because he wants to. He's not putting yeah, himself. Yeah. If there's, it doesn't matter if there's a camera. If not, it's like that's what I like about Sam, and that's why I respect him so much, man. I, when I had like a, a solo session with him. In Germany, we were both at the power slide little town and we went out for mm -hmm. a skate. And he was like, okay, let's find a drop rail. You know, you know that, that <laughs> kind of feeling that we, I used to have like, I don't know, maybe 15 years ago. And I loved it just to go out and look for a rail for him. And then really it's just funny. like he's out and he's like, he doesn't even care. He puts his phone, he goes, he does it. But if there wouldn't be any phone or any camera, he would still do it. It's just, yeah. it's his attitude that makes me respect him so much. So yeah, I guess that would be him, or even maybe, cool, isn't it? Like, yeah, I love it, man. Or I would even say, I want to say, I don't, there, there must be more people, which is like, uh, I don't know. So it would need to be a guy. I, I guess my four, my main four were those, and then Sam would be the fifth. I guess that would okay. be it. Good, good chat. Okay, and you? You managed to do top five. five, that's hard. Top five. I mean, I've been trying to think what you've been saying, because like, I thought you might put the question back at me. Um... Uh, current it's this kind of time of year as well you know that at the end of the summer there's going to be loads of stuff that's going to change my mind that's come out but I, <laughs> I'm like, in the winter so, so. <laughs> yeah how oh, is it how it's still probably more than here though isn't it we're in England it's not, never getting that hot um Colin Martin oh fuck I forgot Colin Martin see I forgot right I forgot Colin Martin Danny Beer, like whenever Danny Beer brings something out, is damn it. I forgot those two. See, that's the problem. Like, we're not that small. <laughs> <laughs> the reason why I choose those two instantly as well is because they're well inspiring, but not in a way that, like, that's the kind of inspiration that you can't copy. Like, you can't, you couldn't, like, make a section and be like, right, I'm going to try and skate like Danny Beer or Colin Martin because, like, they there isn't like a specific way they skate. It's just what the fuck. It's, but it's not. It's just like there's so many things that lead to that type of skating. It's skill. It's not just skill. It's like it's your. How can you, how can you explain what you've been doing with your skate your whole life, man? Colin Martin has yeah. been skating for way too long. I don't know if you know of these uh, Chicago-based photographer called. He used to be he used to live in Chicago. Ryan Shooty. He, he used to work for oh, Daily yeah. Bread, yeah. and he, mm -hmm. we became good friends. He that is the reason why I, I met everyone that I did, why I like whatever I did in Daily Bread, why I started skating for USD. This is the main reason why I'm probably doing this nowadays, Ryan Shooty. And since the mm -hmm. day that I met him, he always spoke about him, Colin Martin, every single day. So it, it's <laughs> been like, and way before people speak about it, you know? And then he had yeah. his time and then he just disappeared somehow. And then a few years ago, like two, three years ago, he started like posting that, type of crazy stuff that is just like no way so i don't know it's just like he has like a a lot of 
background in skating that obviously leaves him with that amount of skill and control that it's like you said impossible to copy yeah he's, he's Danny like, Beer well Danny Beer I don't even know what to say it's just like that guy I don't know he could be an Olympic champion huh <laughs> yeah like and how much fun like how much fun do his edits look like it brings me out and you're just like he makes skating look so much fun I mean it's kind of like a goofy kind of fun but it's like no, it's man. amazing it's so good it's enjoyable you want you see someone skating like that you're like I want to be part of that I want to do that you know that's yeah. that's what we need that's what we're talking about probably if that's the type of skating you would show to your students yeah maybe you're like Okay, what else? We got three more. <laughs> um, fuck, yeah, that is hard. I mean, I feel like Sean Kelso would probably, for a long time, be in my top five. But wait, let me make you a question. I love Sean, and I've been trying to get Sean to make one of these. And I'm, I met Sean a few times, and we actually made like a tour for a few weeks, and but no, I haven't been getting an answer from him. I really wanted to do one of these with him. But my question is, would it be Sean mainly because of his level of skating or or because of the whole thing that he does because i know that he has an an insane amount of control in those skates since forever yeah. but then his filming and his editing video skills yeah. also make the whole thing even more appealing you know what i'm saying it's just like yeah. when you talk about I the think... kelso it's not even the kelso it's the kelsos it comes as a <laughs> i don't know yeah it does But there's one thing about Sean Kelso for me in that there's, I see kind of two types, well, not two types of skating, but two main types of skating. Like people that are fucking sick at skating and then there's people that are like, they do simple skating but do it really swag and just do it really stylishly, you know? Mm -hmm. And there's a very small handful of people that can do both and he's definitely one. Like he's doing, he's like, he's steezing everything at, at, like steezing everything out like everybody else is doing but he's doing tricks that nobody else can do so he's doing the most technical thing that you're just like what and then he's also like just steezing on it so hard and you're just like that's fucking you can't yeah Bo Bobby like, Spesso like, was speaking about it when I made one of these with him he was speaking about the way that even like the way that you put your fingers and all those things make yeah. a huge difference and you can see yeah. you can clearly see that Sean cares about it yeah But I also feel like it makes it so much more authentic that he can do it while doing something difficult. If you're like, you know, you're doing a basic trick, but you're like steezing it out as hard as you can. It's like, yeah, you can do that when you're doing an easy trick because you've got nothing to concentrate on. But if you're doing it <laughs> while you're doing something that fucking hard, like it's got to be pretty authentic. You know, like it's got to be quite natural. It is. There's nothing I can think about doing like a true spin front talk to something else and then thinking about how I'm going to put my arm and how I'm going to steeze it because that's just too much to think about. <laughs> Man, He's so good at I'll, I'll tell you why, I'll tell you why, man. I, I, can, I told you that we did this tour, this BMX tour. That was in 2005. In 2005, he could do hurricane top acids or hurricane backslide to... No, it was hurricane top acid both ways. I think that was it. He was doing it in a yeah. rail in Prague both ways. If you've been doing it, it's not an excuse, obviously. What I'm trying to say here is he's been doing it for so long that... Thinking about the way that he put his arm or the way that he's smiling or something like that is yeah. just a natural progression because there's a time that's like the way that you want to progress or are you going to put one 180 more or you want to yeah. care about the way that that is looking. So I guess it's just a yeah. natural progression, but it's just way too good. It's been way too good yeah. for way too long. But I do remember the first times I saw Sean Kelso The first times that I saw the, the Kelsos back then, it was just like, I didn't even knew which one was Sean or Colin. But I remember <laughs> that they used to do the weirdest frontside torques back then, which yeah. I'm not saying that they changed the way they do it, but they were the first ones that wouldn't do with the foot completely sideways. You know, back then, yeah. everyone used to do a frontside torque more like as an alley-oop than right. than the way that they do. Or that they started doing. They started doing more like as a fish brain. And then uh, somehow Eric Bailey also did him like that. And that's the yeah. only way that I can actually do them. And I like them nowadays like that. But at first I used to think, no, that's not the way to do it. Yeah. Uh, it's way more than the position that you put your foot. Okay, I think you have two more yeah. to go, huh? Um, okay. Uh, Sean King, definitely a best in world right now. Ah, damn it, Ben. You're coming... <laughs> Can I can Sean I have a King top a top ten? 
<laughs> wicked. <laughs> yeah, Sean is like, amazing. He's, that he's that really war ride cool to war ride. Like, have you seen that thing? Yeah, man. Like that whole edit. Like, yeah. He's just a quiet dude as well that just is amazing. Cool. God. <laughs> um, yeah. Last one. I got. Um, JT Truitt, I think, is really good. Wait. Who is that? JT Truitt. Is it JT Truitt or James Truitt? I don't know. He's always in like Cartel of Blanks. He was in Cartel of Blanks' latest edit, uh, video. I don't know that. I, have you so seen that VOD? Like that VOD. What's his name? And ah, oh, come on. Mm. And Andy, the guy that does the front flip, Andy something. Does a front flip? Oh, yeah, I did. Yeah, I know the guy you mean. That's so Just, amazing. <laughs> yeah, like, you, like I, I didn't know what trick was coming next. You never knew what to expect. Dude, he's amazing as a skateboarder. Have you seen him? He had a full... No. Before he, so I, I guess he used to be... Re, I don't remember his last name. He used to be amazing, in, an, an amazing inline skater. And then I guess he disappeared for a while. I don't know exactly why. And then like three, four years ago on Instagram, I used to watch a lot of his stuff and he used to skateboard and he used to do just slides, kind of like power slides and stuff like that, kind of like the downhill yeah. skateboarders. But he used to do it on a short board and he used to do like a lot of spinning tricks and then slowly started mixing those with inline skates in the same videos. Wow. And then I saw I that VOD that. like a few weeks ago and I didn't know what to think. I know that he is on the team of Wish Frames. He's one of the three guys on the oh, Wish Frames okay. on the Wish Frames team. He's amazing. I don't know I don't remember his last yeah. name. He's just amazing. Yeah, I've not heard of him before and I watched him so like, this guy is amazing. What's he up to? <laughs> Dude, the front flip out. It's just like yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but that's great, isn't it? Again, like throwing a nine hundred in there. It's like it's really cool to just be able to I remember when farmers just like changed from doing spin to win tricks and like then started being always loved that he could do a line where he did like a set slide under something low did a cool wall ride and then we'll just do a 360 sole down the hand and you'd be like that's wicked because you can just throw do that everything. in whenever you want you know yeah, who was the so first cool. guy who was the first guy that you, that you remember that s stopped doing 360 or spin tricks he was from the UK I don't know if you remember He stopped doing spin tricks. Yeah, he chose to stop doing those and to focus on other type of skating. That was Ollie Short. Oh, yeah. Ollie yeah. Short was the first guy that I've ever seen doing a hurricane topsail and a hurricane fish brain, way before everyone else. Like, the first time that yeah. I, I saw it, like, properly done in videos was Abdel Goldberg. I think it was FOR2 or FOR3, I don't remember. But way before that, in a high rail, in, in a tall rail in London... Ollie mm -hmm. Short skating some ra some roaches, rose seas, skates. I don't know if it were the fifth <laughs> elements or whatever skates those were. Cute eyes, whatever. They were yeah. black and red. And in th with those skates, he did a hurricane topsail and then he did the perfect hurricane fish brain. And he wow. used to do them so good. He could do 540 kind grounds. He could do all that stuff. And then he just chose to stop doing it. And it's so wicked the way that it that his skating became and how much he got respected yeah. and some people obviously hated on him but that toe roll spin is a soul trick that he does you know, I know the Paul I've been in that spot I've been in that's that spot like, yeah that's <laughs> it like, makes no sense of all at the all done on that that is the craziest isn't it it's like it's a toe roll and a soul grind that's just like it's fucking mental yeah it doesn't make it and the thing is man I know that Oli used to do a lot of toe rolls and ear rolls, like little things, but you never saw Oli doing a spinning trick like that. That would be the type no. of trick that I would see that guy Shays rushing doing, but I never saw yeah. Oli doing them. And then the first time that I see Oli doing something like that, it's on that spot. Yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> but that's it. Well, the last person that I'd put in my top five, even though it would make it six, I suppose, I think Dustin Webesky also has to have a death. Yeah, Dustin is amazing. He, he hasn't made anything for a while, but he's, he's so good. Yeah, the, the amount, the, the level of skill is just for sure there. Yeah. <laughs> And he's one of those super complete skaters that I was talking about. Yeah. He could skate everything. Like he could yeah. slide on wheels, on boot, on whatever. He was the first guy that I, I guess that I saw. Not the first, but... Maybe the first one that made me think, how is it possible to putt slide like that? One of his first Kaiser videos, 
He was doing yeah, a putt slide in Barcelona, and I, I, I still don't understand how he did it or how he could do it. I just don't understand. There's some things yeah. that I don't get it. Yeah, <sighs> but there's more skaters, man. I, I don't know how how we spoke about the top ten and we didn't speak about Nick Lomax because is he might not yeah, be but... your favorite, but the level of skating is just <laughs> yeah. Yeah, uh, I know what you're saying. It's just I don't know. It's I don't understand a lot of things. So <laughs> that's one of them. Nick skating. <laughs> I don't understand it. Yeah, probably I don't even. Sp- I didn't say it, which I don't. I don't know why I didn't say top five. And I know that I'm speaking about some of them as USD skaters, but it's not about that. I guess he's one of the guys that I watch more consistently on yeah. on you on on Instagram, and I'm like, oh, why? And they're like, I always go with the same questions, how or why? And none of yeah. us spoke about Brosco, which is weird. <laughs> that is weird, but he kind of is just like, he's just, like, you don't need to say it. Everybody yeah, knows I, I, guess every, world, I guess like, everyone puts him on top of the thing, huh? <laughs> yeah. You said it during which this is, conversation, you said if he works for Brosco, works for me, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, you, yeah, he's just, you know, he's like, whatever, and he's just, the best in the world and always has been how, how has he been at that level for that whole time it's I don't crazy know. yeah bro yeah i was speaking about farmer and i forgot about that because when i said that farmer has been on the game for forever we cannot forget about him and we cannot forget no. about effie so basically in the end it's yeah. team vibrolux it's been there forever so big yeah. up to adam johnson because <laughs> i don't know what he did there but the team is just there <laughs> yeah I mean, that team that he had when KFC 3 came out, like, uh, Aragon as well, man. Like, that, that team was insane. Oh, God. I don't know. Like, I, people I, always are surprised when I say Aragon because of the type of skating that I do now, I suppose. But, man, that Aragon, uh, which section was it? Ego. Like, the Aragon, these two ego sections are just fucking incredible. You can't. Man, what, what about so the, one, the one on that WRS thing? I guess the thing with Aragon, oh, I had yeah. this conversation with someone before. The thing is, we got so used to see him on that level that we stopped giving him the respect yeah. that he actually deserved because what he yeah, was which doing. Yeah, probably what we're doing with Broscow. We too, got comfortable with it, you know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we we got so comfortable with ah, that's just that's just Aragon. Man, it's yeah. not just Aragon. Is it could make skating look really good. It wasn't. My favorite style of skating, I always thought that he was like, man, he looks way too good. <laughs> he looks way too good. Yeah. I'd rather watch Ollie Short skating. <laughs> it's the truth. Yeah. But at the same yeah. time, it's just like, it just doesn't, man, I don't know. There's a lot of things that he did that don't make sense at all. Like that yeah. Eric, fakey Eric Kane 540 topsail. How? Why? It's just like, yeah, again, yeah, how? Why? Why? Just... <laughs> okay. oh, just Let, let's let's move away from Eric Kane topsail okay, and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Okay, let me go to... I got a postcard. You know what I'm going to talk about, don't you? Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, I got a postcard this week. So basically, here's what happened. I got an email from Sam. Sam, yeah. for those hearing this, is, he was, now, now I know after this interview, he was the main ad of Dirtbox. I actually thought that you were one of the guys from Dirtbox. I didn't knew. But I know that Sam sent me an email and asked me for my address. He wanted to send me something, but he didn't want to tell me what it was. And he said, I'm going to send you something. And after watching some of your videos, I think you're really going to like it. But he didn't want to tell me anything. Then Gee, that I, is such a sad thing to do. Yes, wait, 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 wait. And then I got a postcard. I didn't even know what it was. He said that he was going to send something and I was in Europe. But that was three days before I leave to South Africa. And, and I told him I'm leaving in three days, but my wife is in London. So if you send it to London, she can bring it to me tomorrow. So so he did that. That yeah. was on a Monday. He sent it still Monday. And my wife got it on a Tuesday and she flew to Portugal before we both fly to South Africa. So I got it. I didn't know what it was. She never really told me what it was, and we were in such a hurry that I didn't got anything until I got to South Africa. Once I got to South Africa, she said, so your friend sent me a postcard and a pencil. And I was like, what? I don't know what he was going to send. He never told me. He said I was going to like it, but let me see it. So I opened it, and there was a postcard with a picture. That picture was a gate with a hole, and mm-hmm. there was you jumping through it. And then... 
I'm not going to read it because I don't have it here with me. But I'm going to resume what was saying in that thing. Sometimes it was something along these lines. Sometimes you try things. No, I'm going to, sorry, I'm going to go back a little bit. So he <laughs> said, when, when I shot this image of Scott jumping through the hole, I shot it first and then I didn't really told him, but I didn't shot it right. So I had to ask him to, to do it again so that I could shoot it. But I was so scared to tell him, but I ended up taking a picture. I, I ended up shooting and this is the picture that you're watching. It's the second shot. And from what I guess, what he's trying, uh, it was something along these lines. And yeah. I guess he's trying to tell me or to tell the world, because I know that he sent this postcard with this image. I don't know if it was with the same text to more people. I guess he's giving another try to Dirtbox. I don't think it's going to be called Dirtbox. I don't, he says he's planning on a re, like a refined project. And from what he says, he's been, mm -hmm. he moved away from where he used to be, moved to a farm. He's been thinking a lot what he wants to do. And he, he now has an idea. So I have no idea what's about to come out. Can you speak a little <laughs> bit about this? I can speak as much as I know. And I don't, I don't know that much. I know that, he wants me to be involved, which is great news. Um, uh, you obviously know the name because it's on the pencil, right? So it's called Muzzle. Oh, I didn't knew. Ah, uh, no, no, wait, wait, yeah. let me see, let me see. Do I have the pencil here? So, oh. yeah, it's nothing to do with Dirtbox. Dirtbox is dead, it's gone. He's kind of, I guess, from what I can tell, by talk. I mean, I talk to him most days, so I, I do know him really well, but he doesn't tell me much about this because it's just the kind of guy he is. Like, he's just, He's, I guess, you know, the name Muzzle, like, he's kind of, like, actions speak louder than words, you know? He's, he doesn't like talking about stuff and not delivering it. He'll just fucking do it. Do you know what I mean? Like, that's kind of the guy he is. So, that may, he, I haven't spoke about why he's called a Muzzle, but that's what I would assume because he's just like, let's not just fucking talk about it. Let's just do it. And like, I don't you know, know what a Muzzle is. So, for me, it's just all Chinese. Oh, sorry. <laughs> like, a Muzzle is like... Um, you know when you have like a dog that's a bit mean and you kind of put something over its mouth? It's like a, like a, you know, it's, it's hard to explain, but it's like a, a thing to stop them being able to open their mouths. Okay, like I know, I know. Like keeps your mouth, okay. It keeps your mouth shut. So basically, Sam, no one really like, like just sleep on he keeps it quiet and he just like gets on with it. And I think that's what he's just like saying, so I can get on with it. Um, from what I can gather anyway. So from what I know about it is that uh, Dirtbox is gone. He's taken what he's learned from Dirtbox, like going under, you know, and refining it, theme a little bit. Because what I know from Dirtbox before is that, you know, he had people still on the team from five years ago and they've not made anything for a long time. Which is not to say that they were doing anything wrong, but he was still like giving them product and not getting much in return. So it's kind of like, I think he's learned from that and it's just like keep it very slim. Mm -hmm. Like, you know like this was a smart idea obviously and i don't know about products i know that there's wheels coming so there's uh a 5595 which isn't being poured in the same factory as the dirt box wheel but i think it's going to be very similar like in part was the wheel good i have no oh. idea was the dirt box wheel good i have no idea at all yeah man the dirt box wheel was i mean this is all i skated for a long time um i i skated that same wheel with anti-rocker tri-rocker and flat like this is why i skated for ages and it's okay. you know great um uh i think he's doing he's doing a grind wheel he's doing a 5595 and i think it's either a 100 or a 110 so he's doing like a bigger wheel as well ah that's awesome so that's quite interesting that's cool and is it, is and it coming I, do you know if they're gonna have clothes and stuff like that um as far as i know there's a few things in mind but i don't know because he was saying before how uh, soft goods aren't, you know, they're not the money maker. Not that he's in it to make money, but he wants to be able to, you know, continue the ride. Yeah, and so, it's, it's good for the the riders to somehow promote it. Yeah. And I still want the switch socks. I don't know. I need to find them somewhere. Oh, man. Yeah, they are <laughs> they the, the best. It was the yeah. best idea ever. 
I never liked ever asking for products because it always I, I didn't like being that guy like please can I have some can you send me something but the socks man I couldn't get enough of the socks there was, that was one product that I was like can I get another pair of socks <laughs> can I, I really get another pair of socks <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah they were too good but yeah so muzzle um as as much as I know Sam he'll like be like oh we might not do many sockets but he loves making stuff that's why he's still doing it you know he's like he loves it he absolutely loves it so uh yeah i imagine there will be some soft goods for sure oh, and also, I'm, ex- actually, I'm excited now i can't believe i've forgotten but the first product technically is the vod so he bought out he you know uh mike simpson had the first vod so if you haven't seen that on the muzzle i think it's muzzle.site mike simpson has the first like pay video so that's the first product technically what is it muzzle buy. dot muzzle yeah muzzle m u w z l e dot site let me see let's see so yeah mike simpson do you know mike simpson yeah i he's do know that on there so it's a lot he, he mike should be in my top five mike and harry should be both in my top five to be honest wait but what? you can't really put your own boys in the neck okay uh, it is that the one uh slow feature mike simpson editor okay is that a ah is that a vod yeah mm, i didn't know about that let me buy yeah, this recommended. thing. Recommended. There's a great variety of skating. I mean, he's got like he's skating wizards in there. He's skating uh, mook frames in there at some point. That's awesome. Let me buy this thing right now. Okay, so that's something. That's something to watch later today. My internet is yeah. like. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you guys like the Flintstones. I might need to pedal a little bit for this download today. <laughs> It's just not happening. <laughs> It's just too slow. Anyway, so that's but what that, we know about that's... Muzzle. Basically, you, it's going... What type of... what You say that you want you to be involved as a, as a skater or you think you're going to be involved differently in the brand? Uh, I think just as a skater, to be honest. Um, I, that's, I, I don't know any more of the team, really. Well, I know Mike. Obviously, Mike is involved because he's got the VOD and uh, I know Sam digs his skating a lot. Um, but that's all I really know. He, yeah, I think he wants me to make some stuff. So I do need to make something new soon. Yeah, I've got to start doing that. Because I, I, honestly, I haven't got anything. Usually at this point, if someone was like, oh, can you make an edit for me? I would probably lost my on a hard drive ready to go. But I, actually at the moment, I am cleared out of anything. Okay. Which is crazy really <laughs> it's the first time in a long time huh? <laughs> yeah yeah honestly well, that's good now it's like starting from zero now one question yeah are you going to be skating with big wheels or what um i haven't skated on big wheels for a long time there was a i've for uh, a while in last summer i was skating those trimax frames with some 110s in them i think no way did you yeah and i had them rockered I had them rocket, so the two outside ones were up and the middle one was down. Yeah, so it it's really like hard to skate like rocker. that. But it's yeah, weird but to I skate I was like... loving it. Like, yeah, it was awesome. Because a lot of my friends at that point were skating on Wizards. And I didn't really, I wasn't, sh- I'm still not sure how much I dig big wheel skating. Like, obviously, I really like going fast and it's fun. But, I, yeah, I'm not sure. I probably have, to be honest, I think I have the wrong boot for a taller frame. Like, the M12 boot is not right. It's super low. Skate. Yeah, probably if you have a different yeah. liner, it could make a difference, huh? You know yeah. what? If you give like, if you if you try it, uh, you were saying that you're not a skate nerd, but think about it. If you have a thicker liner with mm-hmm. some lacing, will give you a lot oh, more. Oh, I, I I only I only skate intuition liners. I've only skated intuition liners for like the last seven years or however long they've been around. But I, intuition liners are the best. Yeah, I, I I haven't tried the liners. I know that the material is really, really good. But if you have yeah. like, what I was saying is like, if you have a thicker liner, usually can give you a lot more support. I know that some guys mm-hmm. on the Intuition liners, with Intuition liners, they try to use the ones with the lacing, with a higher lacing just for extra support. Because you might yeah. need it with, when you skate with V13s for like a taller frame, obviously. Like yeah. for I me, thought- skating USD skates, there's only one pair of skates that I actually like to skate with those big wheel frames and that would be a skate that a lot of people don't like which is the sway every other boot i don't think it's high enough to support that. oh okay yeah that's quite a solid boot as well i imagine isn't it so that it is it is some people don't really like the look of it 
I I learned not to like it, and actually nowadays I really love it. So that yeah. boot, I can I, when I put a Trimax frame on the boot, it would only be on that boot. I don't want to scale with anything else on the like with yeah. any other boot on that frame. Somehow I got. I used think to there it. should be more three wheel frames. You know, I think there's something like even like a a more grindy three wheeled frame. You know, like in, I listened to the Nicky Adams podcast today while I was doing some work. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he said so getting the three wheel frames didn't he? and I was like I want to see more of that like I always thought like because like, he said doing unities and like doing a unity with one in the front wheel and one in the back wheel like yeah you, you, you know, can actually do it be interesting man have you tried cause the thing is you can actually do it with the Trimax if you skate 80 yeah. millimeters on the Trimax you have so much space so the first day that I skated Trimax I skated not the first day, since the first day, I skated with 100 millimeters and I would have a little bit more space than people with 110. So I could actually, the first day I was doing back savannas and stuff like that. And nice, you can actually yeah. do them. It's not too hard. I would do them in between the front two wheels. But if you skate like 80 millimeters, you have such a such an amount of space. I could actually give it a try. That could be a cool edit. Just skating with 80 yeah. millimeters or something like that on those skates. It could actually be a cool thing. Yeah, yeah, it would. <laughs> try it come on <laughs> now you're not very much <laughs> you were you were, gone. you were saying about skating them rocker the thing is if you just pull the front wheel up it's already rockered on three wheels the way that you yeah. were using it both wheels up and the, the middle one down that's extreme rockering that you feel <laughs> yeah. you feel like you fall backwards the whole time or forwards yeah. huh? i mean it's It was fun. I was really enjoying it until people would be like, right, let's bomb this hill. And you're a bit like, um... <laughs> Maybe not safe. today. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> don't know if that's safe. Did, did you ever try to skate... <laughs> Sorry. <coughs> did you ever try to skate the Wizards? Mm, no, I've not tried the Wizards yet. Again, because I haven't got the right boot. I mean, the f when I first put the Trimax frames on my uh, M12 boots, I, as soon as I started skating along the uh, sole plate bolts popped through the holes of the sole plates and the, you know like kind of a lot of boot, pressure kind of yeah yeah just both, and I, I had to put some washers in that I got from a, a shop to like put in there because it wasn't really working so I knew instantly the boot wasn't right for it I think one thing that the M12 and the V13 do completely is that even though they've got like five or six bolts going into the sole kit through the sole kit into the boot the frame should definitely screw through the sole kit and into the boot you think so you, you know feel I mean? like it's you feel like yeah, it's too soft the connect I, i just i don't understand why you wouldn't like because in all of my skates that i've had i've got have had so many pairs of those skates and i don't want to talk bad about them because i've got loads of them and i like skating so but every pair i've had after a certain amount of time they all go really tappy and like clacky and you know mm -hmm. no one likes tappy or skates and there's just nothing you can do about it like they just go that way and when you get a brand new one it's fine for ages and then suddenly it'll just go tappy and it's just like i feel like that would solve that problem okay that's good that could be a good thing i've uh, so last week i've been since last week i tried to skate those shift those razor shifts so they sent me a pair oh, of skates oh. to do a review and i tried them. yeah and the razors shift in between the sole plate that one that comes out and the yeah. boot they have a little bit of sun that looks like carpet i don't really know what material is that it's kind of like a carpet yeah. and that could also solve the problem on the m12s because it's like it would be a, an extra layer in between would help yeah. for the noises and because there's an extra layer could also make the skate sound more solid and at the same time fill the space that makes it clacky you know like tick, 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 tick. That could probably yeah. help, but at the same time, you wouldn't have the same feeling because the less material you have in between your foot and the grinding surface or the rolling surface, the better. So, I guess it's all. Yeah, I mean, I've tried. Taste. Um, I've got a funny photo actually of an M12 with a sock wrapped around it because I took the sole kit off, wrapped a sock around the boot, put the sole kit back on, like bolted it back on, and then cut the sock around the sole kit to like have the sock layer between, but it, <laughs> it didn't. Yeah, I think it helped on one of my setups, but not. Was it the switch one. sock? But the, no, it wasn't. It should have been though. <laughs> I didn't want to ruin one, but it looked like a ridiculous skin because I think it was like mustard colored as well. So it just looked horrible. <laughs> it was quite funny. All good, man.
Uh, it's been interesting. I've no, been good. loving this talk. I've been loving like the yeah. old diversity of things we've been talking about. Wait, let me see. Yeah, for how long have sure. we been talking? Yeah, we've been talking about like for an hour and 42 minutes. Do you wow. have anything? Well, <laughs> it goes fast, man. It's like we start. That's mm. what I keep saying. We start talking about things that we actually love to and it goes yeah. fast. Is there anything? I'm just, so just before we finish this, I'm downloading slow. The, the VOD on muzzle, oh, yeah. on muzzle dot let me see muzzle dot site yeah. and it's actually super slow my internet I'm waiting to see it so after we finish this I'm gonna I'm gonna watch it one question cool. any last thing that you want to say is there anything that you want to say before I finish this um mm, <laughs> no Okay, I have one. <laughs> Damn it, I really thought that I'd have something good to say then, but I had nothing. <laughs> I have one way, cool, a funny way to start. Um, you, you asked me the top five best skaters, right? Yeah. I'm going to ask you the top five worst skaters, the top five guys that oh. should have never started skating. <laughs> oh, man, that is... That is putting people on blast. What, now, of all time, No, I mean, like, what I mean by that is, like, is there, obviously, everyone should have started skating, and I'm just, obviously, just having a little bit of fun here, but from the guys that ever made it to to pro skater, which were the yeah. guys that you never really understood how that happened? It can be from 20 years ago, you don't need to put anyone on the line, okay? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, just, I mean, there's so many in my head, like, it's just hard, isn't it? Um, I can be one of them. Hi, I make it. Hi, we make it one. easy. Let's make it easy. I'm, I'm one of them, and then you have only four more to go. So. <laughs> <laughs> Ty Chris is definitely one for me. Like he, I never understood how he's so he's stylish. Dude, I'm gonna tell you something. I had this conversation with someone else before, probably not here. Ty Chris, I have a massive respect for him, not for the way that he made skating look, but. Mm. If you look on that, have you ever heard about the TED talk with Ty Chris? Mm -hmm. Have you? No, I've not. No, I didn't. Never, so I, didn't know I, I don't want to great. change your perspective about Ty Chris, but please watch that because that guy okay. never went to school. His parents were like, they chose to never put him in school. And he, everything he learned, he learned by himself. Now, I don't think he, I don't even think he even did homeschool they told him the best way to learn is <laughs> the life you know and What? and he became a really successful businessman even if we agree or not with his decisions yeah. and i've been again i've been trying to do a skate talk with him and have been ignored a million times but i'm just so used to be ignored <laughs> that i don't even care anymore anyway watch that Skate, okay. uh, watch that TED talk. I'm not gonna. Ex I'm not expecting you to change your opinion or whatever about no, Ty Chris. But it's amazing, and it, it completely changed the way that I see Ty Chris. I used to see him as the guy that only wants to win and all that, but it, mm -hmm. it's a little bit. It's not a little. It's a lot more than that. So, one guy. We have four to go. <laughs> oh God. Um... <laughs> oh God. <laughs> Oh, no. Okay, you can say Tycris times five and resorted. It's all good. There's, to be fair, to be honest, there's a lot in the UK that I would say, but it's just too close to home to like call out those kind of names. <laughs> you want to survive, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Also, I, yeah, I don't want to be that guy, but <laughs> don't be. I'm that trying guy. to think of more international ones from the past, you know, because there's definitely. <laughs> so you want to be safe? <laughs> yeah, there's definitely. Loads. Okay, I'll help you. Uh, there used to be guys that like, what else? Remember Mike Budnick? Yes. He used to be somehow, there was a time that I used to like him, but then in the end I couldn't like the way that he used to skate. So, see, I'm, I'm not being that, ma that was, bad at him, but it was just like the truth. It wasn't my favorite guy, my favorite guy to watch. Yeah, well, back when I first started skating, I remember not understanding Andy Cruz and being like, why do people, why is he on these videos? I don't get I it. I get it. I totally it. understand. And nowadays, I just love the way that yeah. he used to skate so much. Yeah, and now it makes complete and sense. Did, and what about, what was your opinion the first time that you watched the guys from Mushroom Blading? Dude, I remember I was at the, I was at the BMAG house and they had this video with these funny faces. 
<laughs> it made this funny face, kind of like the damaged goods cover. And I was like, what? It's this and i watched it the first time i was like i hated it i really hated it yeah and then i put it the 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 tape again <laughs> and i was like let me watch it again <laughs> and then again <laughs> and again and now that i just love it so i, I, I love really whatever the first time joey and todd it, are but... doing and it's just the first time i think it was just way too shocking you know it was just like yeah it was shocking but it was nowadays i love it so I don't know. I don't remember the first time seeing it, but I do. I do remember the point. Like Big Wheels Two was the point where I realised they have found they found what they should be doing. Do you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like that that's the skates that they should be skating on because it just I feel like that levelled up so much. No, I mean I guess they've Big been skating two. every like they just skate way too good. Like and, and pff, Leon, yeah. that the one that he runs up the rail is just so yeah. <laughs> sick. That, that's. That's one of, I would say that's top 10 sections of all time for me. Big yeah, I don't know that's why Leon we didn't say Leon is top five, huh? <laughs> yeah. I haven't, mm, God, I haven't seen anything for a while, but yeah, he's he's next level yeah. as well. Uh, he can do everything too. Man, I, I guess I have a top 100. It's hard for me. <laughs> <laughs> You're okay. way more involved in blading than me as well, so I guess you see, you probably see my... Oh, mind. man, I just... I just like did. I think I have it. Re I have the names written inside my glasses. It's just <laughs> anyway. <laughs> so you got th you got three to go. <laughs> um, I never used to appreciate Casey Bogosi skating until recently as well. I always thought I never really. You know, he like bends at the ankles instead of. The knees. <laughs> and I remember I know. like when that when the when Face the Music came out, I was like, I don't know if he deserves a section. But now he's fucking great. Like his skating is great. Man, I don't know. I, it's weird. Yeah, it's just the thing with Casey is just like he always had his style and he stayed true to his style. You know that when everyone started bending their knees and tried to to bring his ha their ass close to the skates just to look the same way as the the other guy that used to look good, he never yeah. really cared. And that's what I love so no. much about Casey. He just did his thing the whole time. So yeah, much respect for Casey. Okay, two more. <laughs> Um, I'm going to say Stefan Alfano just because of the way he comes across like, I, I understand someone that it. doesn't know him at all the way he comes across like fucking hell did you ever met him have you ever been with, been with him no. or something like that okay because no. I like I, I probably have a different opinion from most of the people from what I know a lot of yeah. a lot of people don't like Stefan Alfano because of what they heard a lot of people don't like Stefan Alfano and they know him and I actually know him. I have no problems with Stefan Alfano. I never had any problems. He always treated he always treated me really nice, and yeah. I actually respect him a lot. And skating wise, he has an amount of skill that very very few people in the whole world have. When it comes to attitude, I understand. For a lot of people, yeah, his ego might not be acceptable or. He's edited a lot of times. It's hard to understand. It's I don't judge yeah. that. It's not my thing. It never clashed with me, so I can't really complain. But I totally understand, and I know a lot of people who who also add or were close to have problems yeah. with him. So I get that. There's one to go. <laughs> um, maybe uh, far back. Like okay, so I I mean I still don't know how I feel about this because I haven't watched him for a long time but i remember thinking back in like project mayhem like mf usd team when they were the best teams like i always wondered why amongst people like shane scour billy prislin dustin lap wait i think uh, I josh him. petty yeah and then you've got kevin gillen in the middle that i never really understood like he was never on that level <laughs> you know what just kind of getting in i was getting into skating at that time so i don't really i didn't know the history of kevin kevin Ginnon, but i remember at that time being like how he's not on that level i swear he's not on that level yeah you know what i remember watching um i think it was i don't know i don't remember if it was vg5 or vg6 probably vg6 when he had a section with dustin latimer they used to be really good friends and there was a time that they used to like not I wouldn't say compete with each other, but they would mm. they used to skate a lot and they they progressed a lot. 
There was a video. Yeah. Remember? Do you remember Elements 2? Uh, not really. When Elements 2, I think it was Elements. I want to say yeah because I want to be like. Well, you you would remember, remember Elements 2. Elements 2 was the video that started with Dre Powell, Vinny Minton, and Dominic Segona shirt section, and it, it was like these three at a section, and it was like one of the best ever. Yeah. And. Uh, Kevin Gillen had a part in that video and that was really, really good. I remember he had like a lot of switch ups, but yes, now that you say it, it wasn't quite the same. That I don't really remember when was the when was it the time that Dustin kept progressing and Kevin kind of got stuck in there, but for sure they didn't yeah. progress at the same rate. There was a time that he kind of like stopped progressing, but he, the thing, he was there really, really early, you know? He was there really, really early yeah. and he had a really good level and he had some tricks that very few people... He was one of the first guys to actually put true spins in real spots and stuff like that. And back then, not a lot of people were doing right. them. So somehow... Yeah, see, that makes sense. I missed that. I came onto it while well, I was late for that. I think I just missed that yeah, bit. I guess it's kind of that, like that. It's like when, those, when the true spin tricks first came out, or when people started doing true, not that they came up, when people started doing true spin tricks, he was probably one of the first ones to do them, like true spin Machios, true spin Mesos, right. even true spin Souls and stuff like that. So he was one of the first ones to do them. So that would probably yeah. be the reason. Okay. Uh, I guess you came out well, of you those. You made those... Me look like a bad guy. Yeah, that's. <laughs> No, you did good. You did really good. I think I should start making this really bad five because just putting people on the line. <laughs> yeah, it's, a, it's actually a good question. And there's so many that I'd like to say, but it's just, it's not very, I wouldn't like to be the person listening to this and then someone says your name and you're like, Aww. so I'm good. You gotta go, I'll, you gotta go. No, no, I'll, 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 I'll promise you. I'll try to defend everyone. Yeah. I'll try to defend everyone. <laughs> no, man, I guess like... Uh, we all in the end we all respect everyone that does the same as we do as long as they are respectful people like if that makes sense to, to you like yeah man if i'm shitting on everyone else i'm not expecting people to like what i do right you know oh, what no, you yeah. know when you're doing things that you don't reserve respect and we're not treating anyone with our respect we just man it's stating opinions and like i said i'm man since I started doing doing these YouTube things, it's it's been a really good way for me to develop my filters, if that makes any sense. Sometimes yeah, I read yeah. things, I'm just like, okay, man, just you know what, whatever. Because sometimes it's really hard for me to read things and just, man, I I put so much of my time, like I do yeah. make a little bit of cash out of it, but it's it would never pay for the amount of time yeah. that I do. It's just it's it's actually. It's passion and I really want to do it. I want to do something for this. It's the best that I can do. But sometimes reading some things, again, gladly my filters are, have been getting better and better and better. <laughs> so Yeah, good. You, you, you take that for life in general. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> and even like, you know, conversationally, it's like, it's really good. Like, I imagine like you're getting better at these the more you do of them. It's kind of, you know, getting good at listening and getting good at, structuring your thoughts out into your words it's kind of it's not it's not an easy thing to do is it i think it's i'm getting better and stopping to interrupt people i, I still do it every now and then <laughs> <laughs> but it's cool man now the thing is when am i going to meet you when are you going to be in a place like do you usually go to any events skate events or just I, obviously i know that you wouldn't be the type of guy that would be competing at least nowadays no. or you just um, don't no. even travel for skating I to avoid events just mainly because I went to winter class once and then was like this part I just want to skate it the people in the way so I just kind when of was that when was that just to see like if that. I was there just to see um what year was it CJ Wellsmore did like a massive gap to kind grind I remember that's mm, I don't know uh, I remember Leon Basin being there uh he had yeah, I don't think I was there Anyway, so there. let's do this. Let's do this thing. I want to see you skate. I would love to skate with you one day. So since yeah, since, cool. since my friends are all moving from South Africa, if if this is not a muzzle thing, we never know, you know. If I move back to Portugal, yeah. <laughs> if yeah, just like muzzle, if um, 
then we'll find a way. Portugal is becoming like a really cool place. I was there and I'm yeah. really happy with what Portugal is becoming nowadays. So nice. if I ever move there, I'll expect a visit from you. We'll do something. Okay. We've okay. got four guys. <laughs> you can bring the whole crew. <laughs> Excellent. Okay. Yeah, nice. That would, would you be awesome. If, I, if we were to go in the middle of the summer, would it be too hot? I mean, you've got to bear in mind that I'm ginger as well. I'm <laughs> no, man, if, well if I would ever, if, uh, not, I don't know. Whenever that happens, um, man, you can come in the winter. For you guys, it's like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you can come in the winter, you're going to feel like June or July in the UK. So it's all good. Cool. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> let's finish this. Uh, it was really, really nice talking to you, man. Uh, yeah, like thanks I said, for like, me on, man. It's, uh, it's just, I've been wanting to speak with you for a while and I guess it was cool. I I hope that everyone yeah. listened to this, who listened to this enjoyed as much as I did. I hope you did too. It was Yes, I had. Yeah. Very good. <laughs> I mean, you put me in a sticky situation at the end like, <laughs> by work later. So. <laughs> Come on. You made me choose comments, five. Choosing five is work. also not easy, man. Choosing five is like I, I guess it's harder for me to choose five than for you to say the worst yeah. bad, like the worst five. Yeah, it's, it's, just, it's just, I don't know. I have too many favorite skaters. The thing is, every time I start one of these, I'm going to, I say one of my favorite skaters. So I have way too many. You need to listen to the intro that I did for you. Okay. <laughs> Which yeah, I don't yeah, remember really. anymore, but still. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that was cool. You should do a podcast series which is just top five and just have a list of different top fives like the top five most disappointing sections of all time. Ah, oh, that would be amazing. But see, that's the type of things that I need to do. I need to be in a place and having people coming around and sitting there and actually do yeah, it. True. Not like VR. Yeah, Even true. if I think the audio today is not that bad, I think the audio might be the best. <laughs> um, yes. <laughs> I think the audio might be the best that I've done. Anyway, we might need to do that one. We might need to start that one once you go to Lisbon then. <laughs> yeah cool perfect okay That's it. see you next time in lisbon okay. thank you so much thanks man and good night <laughs> cheers hey. cheers and that was it that was a super super entertaining skate talk at least my way i hope you guys also felt the same way and if you did enjoy this one if you're not subscribing to this youtube channel do not forget to subscribe there's a there's a button saying subscribe that at the moment should be gray. If it's red, that means that you need to press on it. Once you press on it, it's going to become gray. On the side of that gray subscribe, it's going to show up a little bell. If you press on that bell, you'll get notifications every time I upload one of these. And if you enjoyed this video, do not forget to give me some thumbs up. The reason why I ask you guys to give me thumbs up and to subscribe to these videos is the more good feedback. Sometimes even if you give me a thumbs down, the more engagement I can get to my listeners, the more YouTube is going to suggest these videos. And as you guys might know, I put a lot of my time and effort into these and the whole goal is to get to show skating to more people. So the more you interact with these videos, with this podcast, whatever, the more YouTube is going to suggest this to other people, so the more we can show skating. And that's it. What I always say is just don't forget why we all started skating, because it's fun. Cheers, guys, and see you soon.